Call the regular meeting of the uh, Pennington County Commission to order. And uh, just want to point out that we do have speaker request forms in the back of the room if you have items that you would like to, to speak on. Uh, we'll start with a moment of silent reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Lassiter. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Lassiter. A um, couple things on the uh, item number four on the review and approve agenda. Um, uh, just want to point out that uh, item 12 is to be uh, removed from the agenda. And on item 20, uh, items from the public, uh, we're gonna try something a little bit different. Uh, we've had, uh, if you agree to it, <laughs> we've had uh, a couple of people that have left uh, recent meetings that were here for the public comment period, but uh, could not wait until we got to that. So I've moved that up on the agenda to try it, and we'll see how that works out. So. Uh, with that, I would uh, accept a motion to approve the agenda by removing item 20. So or I, I'm sorry, item 12. So moved. Second. We got a motion from Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Lasseter. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Moat carried. Uh, recognition of new employees. Uh, we had quite a group here this morning. And uh, it's always fun to visit with those individuals that have come to be employed by the county and one of the departments. Uh, again, we had a number of people that have moved here from out of state, uh, just enjoying the Black Hills of South Dakota and wanting to live in this area. So it was a, it was a good time to uh, be able to visit with them and spend a few minutes of time with them. And uh, hopefully they ended up eating all of the goodies that were in the back of the room and stuff too. So uh, any comments from the commission in regard to that? Now we'll go on to the consent agenda. Holly Hennings. Good morning, commissioners. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of May 18th, 2021. Number seven is to approve the renewals of the retail on-off sale malt beverage and South Dakota farm and wine licenses and to release the licenses upon payment of appropriate property taxes for the following. Clay Tile Barn, Jolly Lane Greenhouse, Moonshine Gulch Saloon, Sugar Shack, and the Tatanka Trading Post. Number eight is to acknowledge the resolution for a minor adjustment to the road district boundaries of the Kennedyville Loop Road District. Number nine is to acknowledge the resolution for a minor adjustment to road district boundaries for the Cavern Road District as described by the auditor. Number 10 is to acknowledge the recommendation for appointment of Ms. Sandra Rundy and Mr. Jim Coleman to the Pennington County Planning Commission, each for a term of three years. Number 11 is to appoint Commissioner Lloyd LaCroix and Commission Manager Holly Hennies as Pennington County's voting delegates for the 2021 uh, National Association of Counties Convention. And number 13 is to approve the joint powers agreement for weed spraying services between the South Dakota Department of Transportation and Pennington County, uh, submitted by Natural Resources. And commissioners, at this time, I'd like to ask you to remove item 10, please, from the consent calendar. Are there any members of the public that would like to have any items removed from the consent agenda? Any other items by the commission that would... Commissioners that would like to have items removed from the consent agenda other than number 10. Number 10 has been removed. Uh, Holly, would you like to speak on that? Do you want to do a motion to approve the consent? Sure. 
Uh, can I have a motion to approve 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, and 13? So, so moved. moved. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Laster, second by Commissioner Hadcock. Uh, all those in favor and to keep us hang on. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 10, Commissioners, I just wanted to let the board know that since the agenda was uh, created on Thursday afternoon, we have received two additional applications from qualified residents for the Planning Commission. So at this time, I don't see the need to reopen those for further advertisement um, in order to save time and get them on the board so we don't have any shortages. Um, I'd like to move forward with interviewing the two that we have. And at this time, we just ask for the uh, motion to acknowledge the recommendation so we can move Jim and Sandy forward. So moved. Second. Got a, I've got a motion by Commissioner Hancock, second by Commissioner Laster. Uh, for the comments? All those in favor of the motion and keep us saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. We'll go to uh, item 14, uh, regular agenda items. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Commissioner Lassiter, as I know that he's been to Wall and uh, met with uh, Wall officials relative to the proposed Wall Industrial Park. Commissioner Lassiter. Thank you, Gary. Um, last Friday, I believe, I went out to Wall to, maybe it wasn't last Friday, it was two weeks ago. Can't remember. Sometimes I forget what date it was. Went out there to um, hear the presentation about by Mary, their economic development individual, about the industrial park that they're working on out in Wall. Um, it sounds like a really good project that we might be interested in being a part of. So I have invited them here to give us a presentation so we could kind of see what they're thinking and what they're doing out there. So, um, uh, Gary, uh, Commissioner uh, Drews, if you don't mind, I'd like to have Mary come up and just kind of give an overview of their plans and what they're working on out there. Absolutely. Morning, Mary. Good morning. And uh, thank you. I also have uh, our mayor, Marty Heather, with us and our executive director of economic development, Lily Stone. And Marty will be visiting with you in a moment here. First of all, I certainly want to thank Commissioner Lassiter for coming two weeks ago and sitting down with us and taking a tour of an industrial park. And for you, uh, Chair Drews, for inviting us to come and present. Uh, we're very privileged to do that. What our thoughts are as we learned about the American Rescue Plan from District 30 legislators from visiting with the South Dakota Governor's Office, the South Dakota Governor's Office of Economic Development and Elevate People, we want you to know that we have shovel ready plans for both an industrial park and a residential development area called Echo Valley. And both need a new wastewater system, which, which fits that criteria precisely if you uh, take the time to read the 39 pages of Federal, federal Register that they just published that information. The two estimates together amount to about $2 million. In Wall, the amount of money that a city gets is based on population. That's going to put the dollars we get from the rescue plan at 140000 So cities like Rapid City and Sioux Falls get way more than that, hardly know what to do with all that money, but yet the cost of doing a wastewater system uh, is the same in Wall as it is in, in, in Rapid City and Sioux Falls. So no way will our dollars go far enough. So when you think about wall, you probably think donuts and free ice water. And that's been true since 1931. We definitely are a tourist community. We have a very strong tourist industry. But since 1907, egg people came to the wall community too. For instance, my parents, my husband's grandparents came in a covered wagon. So egg and tourism are the two industries that are very important to the Wall area. So let's talk about the industrial park that you have in front of you. We um, started this 
in February of 2020 when the city council designated 98 acres to be an industrial park. It's located right north of the airport along Airport Road, very close to I-90. We are, so we're close to air and rail uh, service at our industrial park. And beginning in March, in the beginning of March, 2020, uh, the picture of not one single car parked on Walls Main Street for March, April, and May made us realize that this endeavor to bring industry, uh, ag, value-added ag industries to wall was probably more important than ever before, even though we had launched this before COVID hit. In October of 2020, the city council implemented a 0% discretionary formula for five years for new industrial structures, and the mayor will be talking about that in a few moments. Wall Economic Development hired engineers to design our IP um, uh, park and design the lots, and we have cost estimates. Wall Economic Development has also begun the process to become a light certified industrial park which means that we will be the only light industrial park designated in Western South Dakota. You accomplish that by uh, fulfilling the items and the criteria in this application. That puts us on the website for GOD. So when site selectors are zooming around for a place to land, we will be the only West River industrial park on that website. Now, when uh, Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden and Senate Majority Leader Gary Kamak visited Wall and also did like Commissioner Lassiter did in viewing our park, uh, the Lieutenant Governor was very surprised at that. Being from West River and knowing that there was no other industrial certified industrial parks. So when uh, Commissioner Steve Westra was out in this area over the last two weeks and speaking to different organizations. He shared that there's two important things that need to be done in or for economic development. One is to have land available for companies to expand it. We've got that. The other thing is housing, and that's what the mayor is going to speak to you about in just a moment. So we, speaking of the certified park, have only two items left to be able to file this application and make that website so people know about us and send us, uh, by looking at that website, it will send them to our website, which also has our industrial park on them. One of those two items is a wastewater system. So that's why we're particularly interested in talking to you folks. So you're looking at the um, industrial flyer or marketing plan that our engineers put together for us. The other um, item, if we can wake this up a little bit, we have the cost estimates. This is for the inside of the industrial park Um, Commissioner Lassiter asked, what's your skin in the game? Well, there's our skin in the game. That will give us a roadway and the internal sewer or wastewater system needed uh, for our industrial park. But this is where we need help. This is uh, not city-owned land. There's a road easement or an easement that goes across private land from our industrial park under the railroad and connects with, connects with wastewater uh, near the Creighton Road. That's where we need help. That's county land. And um, that is about a, just slightly over a $900,000 project there. So at this point, uh, I would like to invite 
Mayor Heather to the podium and let him talk about our residential um, area. Mayor Marty, come on up. Good morning to you. Good morning and thanks for having us. Any questions, I guess, on this first couple of slides before we... Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Roskin. Uh, just a couple. Uh, what are some of the obstacles relative to being uh, certified? We're in the same process trying to repurpose the sawmill in Hill City, which is about 85 acres, and we've met with uh, Geo, ED, and, and uh, so I might want a copy of that uh, application that you got, but I'm just curious what else uh, are they looking at? I know they don't want anything to be in the floodplain. Good question, and, and Mary can maybe touch on that a bit too, but we we've started those processes uh, working on environmentals uh, to make sure all that's cleared as well. But part of the, the certified part is the key word there, and, and you can put an industrial park up uh, and get some some traction and even work with GOAD, but uh, visibility, they really ratchet up to visibility, the, the state site does. And, and, and people looking, we see RFIs, requests for information coming through on a weekly basis. And one of the things that, that prospective businesses want is something shovel ready, something certified, something they know that all the steps have been, all the boxes have been checked. And that goes back in direct relation to that, that checklist that Mary's talking about. Yes, we can proceed. We're going to proceed regardless. We want to get an industrial park set up. We've got some interest, uh, nothing in writing, but we've got um, several businesses internally, which is perfect because we want internal businesses to expand and um, then attract outside businesses. But we've got a lot of interest. Um, but the certification really puts you out there um, in, in a wider spectrum, you might say. And then you compound that with your five-year discretionary tax formula. That's pretty aggressive. Yes. <laughs> We're looking at doing that countywide, but not quite that. Uh, it'll be a little more conservative. Sure. Mr. Um, Chairman. Mary, do you mind if I interrupt? Just a quick point, because I was going to tack on to, about Steve Westra. He came and, and I visited with him. Well, he gave, gave a, brief, um, a presentation at uh, the Elevate meeting, and he was talking about right now there's 66 um, businesses in some shape or form that are looking for places West River, and they're looking for places that have the land that they're looking for, the amount of land that they're looking for, and that are ready to go because they're making a decision within the next, you know, six to eight months of where they're going to transition from where they're at currently to come into South Dakota. The question is, do we have something ready for them to move this way? So I just wanted to point that out. I know you talked about it, but there's 66 that are looking at us that are kind of in that where they've already gone through the, the bulk of the steps and they're kind of like in that last 10 step process of trying to narrow it down to the last few um, cities. So, just to put that so in Commissioner Lastro, as well. would that be industrial and commercial? Industrial, commercial, uh, all aspects of different businesses. Okay. Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. Did you have a follow up, Ron? I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to have, have you uh, reached out to Elevate Rapid City yet? Oh, yes. We're working closely for them. Okay, good. We're good. very grateful for their offers that if they have something that comes our way because we're not looking for 100 employee businesses we're looking like from five to ten and uh, but specifically to answer your question on the environmental stuff is besides a whole lot of paperwork that shows them maps and this and that but endangered species we have done designated wetlands we have done the floodplain thing we have done, the um, archaeological studies we have done, and the soil borings. So the wastewater we have to answer, and then we have intentionally held off on the phase one ass assessment because it's only good for three years. So we don't want to use up any time um, waiting for our wastewater to go in. So that's basically what the, what the application is about, and then just answers, you know, where's your railroad located? Where's the wastewater? What is the design? So forth. Okay. That Commissioner Adcock. So Ms. Mary, then the two obstacles were wastewater and what? And the other thing, which we've already got a firm uh, contracted to do for us, and it'll take them two to three weeks, uh, is the phase one assessment, which just says there's no um, car bodies buried out there. There's no... Um, Basically an EIN to make sure everything's okay. Yeah. Um, so, and you said you do own the land or do you have to buy some of this land? No, we all just, are. It, you answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. It's, it's, it gets uh, somewhat convoluted, but uh, th this industrial park actually started 
probably five, six years ago. So it's been a, so it's not like we just started. We, we've gotten to this kind of the 11th hour here. But the city purchased the land around our airport from Canadian um, Pacific a few years ago and then took a portion of that, this 98 acres, and designated as industrial park. So it does belong to the city right now. But several years ago when I set up the economic development wall, we set it up as a, as a C6, not a C3. So we can, for economic purposes, we can go from the city through economic development um, directly. So when we have prospective businesses, we can do that flow through without having to do a, a sealed bid or go to auction. So Mayor Marty, is there any FAA laws in that industrial park because of being by an airport then? There are, and thank you for asking that because another element of this is we've, we're in about year four of a, a new study. And so we are actually extending the runway for our airport. And we're, we're to the point where hopefully in the next year, year and a half, we'll begin construction because we've gone through all those phases and done environmental on that as well. Okay. So we're actually adding about 1,000 feet to our runway, which is actually fitting to this as well. And they've actually looked at KLJ, uh, had looked at uh, the runway, our crosswind runway. So we're well within our parameters uh, for building any place there. So the flight zone is not going to affect the industrial no. park in any way? No, we've been to, uh, per KLJ, no. Will and not. then do you guys have any money to start this project? A little less than a dollar. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, we, we do. I mean, there's, there's, we're trying to look at ways to get creative. And I'll be, that's why we're here, because the uh, last few meetings we've had committee-wise, is, is that's a large chunk um, to, to take that leap of faith, you might say. We've had some interest. Right. Um, so we're right now at the point, if, if we don't probably come up with some, some funding, right now we'll probably look at doing a holding tank. Um, which is somewhat quite a bit cheaper than taking you know, the three three thirty five hundred feet across country there, um, and it's not ideal. It's it's something a short term solution. It, it's not something we really want to uh, do uh, out the gate just in case if it does get traction. We're we're kind of under the gun to then extend that if that holding tank's not sufficient. For me, for me personally, I like somebody to have some skin in the game, meaning some money yes. for that project to start before I personally agree with something. Um, only because, you know, it takes work to get there. And once you put that work in to get some of that money, right. I mean, you're not willing to lose much if you if you didn't, you know, if you started and had to, had to work for that money. Um, there is economic development through the uh, state. And maybe with a letter um, through this commission, we could actually get some of that for these guys as in one of their economic um Things. I don't know if that's a possibility to help them start as well. Um, and Gary, you might know more about that than me, but I think this is a good project. I think it should be invested in. We are trying to play team, as, as we say, in uh, Pennington County, not just about Pennington County, but other areas that we support, and you guys are one of them. So um, anything we can move forward to help you with is good. But again, I, some of that skin in the game is is raising some of that money too. So, sure. Mr. Chairman, hey, go ahead. If you don't mind a follow up, yes, uh, sir. Commissioner Hadcock there, um, Mayor and and uh, Mary, if you don't mind, can you can you talk to us about what we talked about over there? You know, you've got a couple of projects actually in the works, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, if you if you put in an industrial park, you you know, you get a place for businesses to go, but you're having a housing issue. Um, you're also working on a housing project that um, is to bring in, you know, it's a private housing project to bring in housing so that you have housing for anybody or any of these businesses to have their workers to be able to live in the same community and work there. Can you talk about that? Because I think um, seeing that y'all have skin in the game, money in the game, they're trying to get that project going. This is a complementary project to show that you've, they're synonymous. You got to have them together, kind of the way you walked me through it. So maybe that would help. Sure. So what you're looking at is now south of Interstate, just south of the wall, uh, probably where our, our rodeo grounds are, if you know where that's at. And, and the, the rail, actually see the top of that comes under Interstate and rail goes to the north of this, this housing development. So this is called Echo Valley, and there's uh, they originally designed about 23 lots, and they're now I think they're down they're up around I think 39, 40 lots in this complex. Just to the further south of this that you can't see, there's a cul-de-sac where there's already some infill about um, three houses, and then there's going to be a, another one. Yep, there you can. Thank you. Oh, so in that little cul-de-sac there, you can see at the bottom of that what we call Airport Road, which is County Road. Um, there's three houses in there, and they just sold another one of those lots. But they're, they're having, you know, they're kind of at a, a little bit of a standstill and hurdle. They haven't had a lot of traction. Um, the, the biggest hurdle there is, is none of that other infrastructure is built. 
So just that cul-de-sac. So those, that brown road you see going north there and the other little cul-de-sac to the north and up through that complex. There's no road, there's no water, there's no sewer there. So to get creative there too, and this is probably our skin in the game, been working with the developer and we tried to come up with a somewhat creative way to, to jumpstart this. Um, TIFs are very difficult in a small town, um, things of that nature. So we've put together a, a template that we can use for all developers going forward that, that the city will try to front load all this cost and then for every lot sold, the developer will pay us back a percentage of that. It's actually locked in, so they'll sign a contract, locked in. And, and so in this case, it'll be like 20 installments that they'll have to pay back to the city and it's a 15 year payback. So after the 15 years, if they whether they've sold the lots or not, they have to give us the money that they said they would. I think in this case, it'd be around $180,000 that the developer's on the hook for. And then what I would like to do, and I've, I've got the council to agree to this, is is use our enterprise funds. Um, so our water sewer funds to help get this infrastructure going. So that's where the conundrum is, is, is yes, we have some of those enterprise, enterprise funds and, and a little bit of kitty built up, um, about 400 in water and about 400 in sewer. So we can, we can use some of that. We don't want to use it all, obviously, if, in case we have a well go down. We have six wells in the town wall. But we can use a good portion of that to get this kickstarter. But if you use this and you look at the industrial park, there's not enough in there to do both. So that's where we'd like to, you know, that's our skin in the game is to use our enterprise funds to fund. Um, in my mind, the industrial park is extremely important, but until we solve housing, um, if we bring a business in even the 10 new employers, it, it, they gotta have a place to live. And the housing market's pretty tight right now and, and, and wall much like it is in the hills. So it's, if we can jumpstart this and, and get some traction, I think this, these are two good projects to pair together. So can I ask Jimmy? Sorry. So at that point you couldn't tiff it or do anything else and then save your water and sewer funds for your industrial park and tiff that and just basically so you didn't have to do the whatever tax stuff, you could actually tiff it, take the taxes down lower for a while so they could actually it actually save them a lot more money that way. Potentially, I think we're willing to look at a lot of options there. We're trying to do the, what's best to fit the, the community as a whole. So, Mayor, is this is this entire development within the city limits already? It, it, today, it is not. So there where you see that, what we call our Old Town Dam, the water area up there. So that area, um, actually, uh, about where that line is, that lot line, that back lot line is, maybe a little bit more, there's a there's an L-shaped carved out from about right there and you go down and then and about where that cul-de-sac is back and then go back to the left, my left. Um, that's still in the county. Now they are in the process of, of getting that plat and getting that, try, we'll try to get that back into the city. But, what about but the entire part is not, it's, there's a portion that's in the county. Chairman, so that probably won't work because you gotta have some kind of something to get the money for the TIF off of because a lot of times you need that. Right. Yeah, yep. so. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinek. Marty, I, I see there's uh, some really small lots. Are they, are they future lots or? Th those are all future. Anything you see right now up on the screen is future. So what's the difference between the, uh, I see some three acres and then some uh, one third acres. So would the larger lots be able to, uh, large enough to put a, be self-contained with a septic system? Septic system? Hopefully not. And that's part of the original ones that went in um, several years ago. They they did septic systems and try to don't want to have 30, 40 lots out there and all of them have separate septic. You know, it's tough enough now in this environment to buy a lot. You know, the cost a lot and build and then have to spend another fifteen thousand on a on a self-contained septic system. Um, so that's it's where we really want um, have put the cost in um, for uh, water and sewer to go back. We have a couple of lift stations. That's the other challenge here is is doesn't gravity flow back to our, our containment ponds. So where is the water or sewer treatment plant in Wall? This is what you'd like to do is to. For this, uh, for that, for that plant, wherever it is, to that plant would be used to service all these future lots. It, it would be uh, the, the treatment ponds are just uh, east of town. So if you go east of town and then drop off, um, go towards what our, where our shooting range is, if you know where that's at. Um, there's just some containment ponds there. That's for liquid and solid. And then it overflows. We have liquid goes um, further, about actually about 10 miles east. Um, out in some, we used to be forest service land in the city several years ago, about a couple hundred, about 700 acres actually. And so there's, there's capacity there. So if we grow, we have tremendous capacity to, to accommodate that. 
Any further questions? Appreciate you coming. Uh, well, we would like to share one more thing about oh, our discretionary formula. Sure. For yes, me. please do. Yeah, and that's where, and if you give me, I'll, I'll be brief, but um, and, and I can leave copies if you want to take a look at. I've got extra copies. Uh, but one of the reasons we looked at the discretionary formula versus TIFs and some of the other, other things, when we met with GoEd several times, it's modified, we had some possible value-added ag opportunities. We actually met with a few. We met with an egg producing plant several years ago. One of the, our hurdles there is, is several counties in western South Dakota and, and a lot of other areas do the five-year zero um, tax abatement. That's a huge benefit to let those businesses get built and get started and get going. And I know it sounds like, well, we're given a tax abatement for five years. Well, those businesses, we're, we're doing it for commercial. We'll actually do it for residential as well to try to get that, to get them in a small town, to get them going. Because I think we've shown and, and on the table, and I won't go through all the numbers. I'll just leave it for you to look at. But the return on those, you know, if you infill this, this housing development, if you get four or five businesses to grow in a small town, which is attractive now, because um, we have everything there. We have high-speed internet, we have rail, we have interstate, we have airport, we have everything. Um, we just need this industrial park stood up and we need this housing stood up. But that return, you'll see that benefit over time is, is tremendous. Now you're talking, if you get 20 some lots, four or five businesses, you're talking several hundred thousand dollars over the next 25 years. Uh, those aren't there. If we can't get them there, those tax dollars are never there. So that's, that's why we looked at that tax abatement, tried to mirror what some of the other counties, like Fall River County, Mead County, do in, in some other states and some other areas. That, that's one of our disadvantages when we look at, especially value-added ag type businesses, when you're looking to invest, you know, 10, 12, 14 million dollars. Um, if they can get a break for a few years, get on their feet, and then that payback is tremendous. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Raskin. Is that uh, geared towards commercial, industrial, or residential too, Marty? Both commercial and we just we have had the residential for about three four years and we just the council just passed one for the commercial um seven months ago Do you know when was it last, last year buddy about, about a year ago okay okay can anything else do, can i pass these out Please. certainly okay so. so our closing question would be what what is our next steps to stay connected with you and in conversation with you well, I think the I think the information that you provided us gives us an opportunity to uh, discuss uh, how we can fit this into, or does this fit into, you know, what the county plans are, and so I, I don't think there's anything else you can do as far as we're concerned at this point in time. Uh, individually, commissioners may be contacting you for additional uh, information. Uh, but I would say now it's back to this commission to see whether or not, uh, you know, these type of needs uh, fit within the uh, programs that we plan on moving forward with. So uh, without you coming forward, though, and, and presenting it, uh, we wouldn't have known all this information unless Commissioner Laster uh, had a photographic mind and was able to present everything to us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. So we appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time, and thank you again. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Right, thank you. You bet. Thank you. Next item we have is uh, item 15, and this is uh, the resolution recognizing efforts to support the homeless population and encouraging uh, giving to local charities. And Commissioner Deb Hadcock has spent uh, several months working on this. We appreciate your efforts on this, uh, Commissioner, and I'm going to turn it over to you. So... Commissioners, we've been working on this with the downtown, the mayor. D'Amico uh, um, is with the downtown. Miss Hawley uh, should take credit for this. She's been involved with this. And Tracy Decker. Tracy Decker is the one that did the resolution. It's amazing resolution. We cannot do an ordinance um, to have an ordinance um, on panhandling is against the law. But you can um, encourage people to give. Basically, this resolution is about the donors and that we're trying to encourage people and have them tell them there's a better way um, for people to get help. So um, your money will go further if given to charity with the knowledge, empathy, can't say the word, empathy and purpose in serving the homeless population. And that Pennington County encourages all taxpayers, residents and visitors to donate to local charities to help serve the homeless rather than giving to panhandlers. So we're kind of having an epidemic with panhandlers in Rapid City to the point where Businesses are really being affected, and people um, are really being <coughs> affected. And it came to the point that the Bradskis came to me as downtown business owners and other people saying, Debbie, we really have a big problem 
So I went with Mr. Lehman or Lehman with uh, um, the uh, city, talked with him a little bit, D'Amico, and we had a meeting with the sheriff, the police chief and others, and tried to find the solution. And this is the solution we came up with was to really register it with the donors that we made a care campus for a reason. We are making these buildings and we're helping the homeless and the people to move to the next step. But I'm finding from other people that um, either been there, done that or not. Um, when we give them money, people, panhandlers, it's not helping the situation. It's actually making it worse and it's bringing more and more people in that way. And it's also making more and more people afraid to go downtown and to go in different areas in Rapid City because they're being accosted to the point where um, somehow we got to try to break this cycle in a way um, to make people understand that um, we're here to help, but not by giving money, but giving care. So that's our bottom line. Um, we are, if this goes through, we are going to do some signs. Um, the mayor is with us on this doing signs and post them and any businesses who want them, that there's a better way to give. Also, um, that uh, Helene Duhamel will do some radio and TV about a better way to give and that we have a care campus and we're willing to help and have some empathy and some uh, purpose um, of why we don't want to hand money, but we want to hand services, meaning um, to help. So that's our bottom line. Very good. Caleb, come on forward. Caleb, Caleb Arsenal with uh, Live Hotel Group is here also relative to this. Would like to speak to it? Morning, Caleb. Good morning. Just Thank identify you. yourself. And My name is Caleb Arsenal. I'm the CEO of Live Hospitality. And I'm here this morning to speak to you about uh, this resolution in support of uh, Commissioner Hadcock and what she's trying to do. Um, we have just under a thousand hotel rooms in Pennington County amongst the eight hotels. So we have uh, Watiki Water Park, the Alex Johnson Hotel, Country Inn and Suites, American Lodge and Suites. So we see a lot of the activity that Deb is describing. And um, she has brought a new idea. This is something that we haven't tried. I do think it comes down to education. Um, our visitors, when they come to the area, they're very giving, um, they want to help. And what they don't realize is they're actually hurting the issue and, and they're exacerbating the issue. So, um, I think it's an educational process to try to, you know, educate those folks to, to give to the nonprofits where you can get the proper help and care. Generally, if you don't give that money to a person in need, it's going to drugs and alcohol, which isn't helping anyone. So, um, I think the signs, I think an educational campaign, I think it's needed. I think it's something we haven't tried before. Um, and it's a real issue. And we're on the cusp of unprecedented visitor uh, traffic coming to the area. It's, it's off the charts. We've never seen anything like it. So I'm concerned if we don't do something different that, you know, that problem will just continue to grow and increase. So I would ask for your support of this resolution um, so we can try to curb this issue and mitigate some of the negative effects. Experience. Any questions to Caleb? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Caleb, Raskin where do you see the problem being the worst? I assume uh, the downtown central business district? You know, I, I would say probably a year or two ago, it was certainly the central business district that was a problem, but we're seeing it out on, you know, exit 59. We're seeing it out at exit 61. So it truly is across the entire city into Box Elder out at Watiki at our development there. We're finding, you know, homeless people sleeping in, a, in our hallways and, and things of that nature. So we've definitely seen a growth and in an influx of the issue. So um, I think if we just continue to try to do the same things, it's pretty much insanity, right? So we've got to try something new. Again, I think the sign and the educational campaign, we have some great nonprofits. Um, I think if we can encourage people to support those, then those folks can get the proper care they need. Those are questions, Commissioner Echo. No, um, just Sheriff Tom as well wants to speak to me too, if you would. Sheriff Tom. Thank you, Thanks, Caleb. Caleb. <clears throat> Ms. Holly, and if you'd like to say anything too, that would you've been on this committee. Morning, Kevin Tom, Peter County Sheriff. Uh, like Commissioner Hadcock said, we've been working with her at the State Attorney's Office, uh, met with some of the business owners, the city, trying to address the issue. And I agree, we need to raise awareness. This public education campaign, we've agreed to help with some signs, particularly around our campus here. And then through our office and our public information officer, help with some of the messaging. So we're available and on board to support the cause as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Anyone else? 
Mr. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. I appreciate everybody's hard work on this because I think uh, my my employer goes through, deals with a lot of the homeless quite a bit and a lot of our businesses that are out on the streets and, and working with the people and so forth. And so this is a, a problem. Um, one of the things I was thinking about is I don't know how much research was done. I remember in Nashville, uh, they had some type of some different type of organization to their, there wasn't panhandling. You've seen the homeless, but they, there was no panhandling. I, I, granted, I didn't take up what, what was going on, but they actually had to have a license in order to sell like a newspaper or something like those, but it had to do with the charity. Didn't check in on it anymore, but I think that'd be something to research later on. But I, the, the idea of actually the PSAs, I think, is a fantastic idea, Caleb. I mean, if you guys got it in your businesses that you can share that and they see that, that helps out a lot. And they know to walk away or what forth because it, it is a humbling experience to be approached when you're downtown and so forth. You don't know what to do with some of these characters. So, But I think the, the advertising and the education that, that you guys all come up with, I think, is a fantastic idea. Um, I just like to look at that uh, Nashville deal once and see what they were doing. It's something a little bit different. You're still seeing the people, but they weren't doing like they do in Rapid City. So if you happen to be there on a vacation or something, check it out. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Lasser. I just want to speak in support of this uh, resolution as well. I'm a, a director of a nonprofit in, in town, and... Uh, one of the things we don't do is we don't give things away. We we make our clients earn earn it. You know, we educate them, we give them the resources so that they can be productive members of society. And the only way to do that is to get them to a nonprofit organization or an entity that's willing to help them get to where they need to be so that they can be productive. So this resolution is something I'm supportive of, and and I appreciate uh, Commissioner Hancock for working hard to get this going. Okay, we have a resolution in front of us. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt this resolution? So Chairman, move. Mr. Chair. We got a motion from... Ms. Holly, Holly can answer Lloyd's question as well. Yeah, I was just going to add to um, Commissioner Lloyd's comment is the group did uh, a lot of research on other areas across the country and what they had done. And um, bottom line is panhandling is protected under First Amendment free speech. Um, so this this resolution is not targeted towards panhandling itself. It's more, um, as Commissioner Hancock explained, the backside of of the donations and being able to do it a little bit differently to help um, the individuals. So a lot of different things were were looked at, and um, the giving meters um, downtown. This this goes in conjunction with that, but from more the public education side of. Okay what is what is able and out there. So um, Tracy Decker from the State's Attorney's Office did an amazing job with the resolution and um, thank her and thank Deb for her hard work in the group. And Thank you, Holly. I've got a motion from Commissioner Osconect. Is there a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Laster to approve the resolution recognizing the efforts to support the homeless population and encouraging giving to local charities. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Commissioner. you for everybody. Thank you, Caleb. Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Next item is uh, 16 items from equalization. Gordon Wendell. Morning, Gordon. Good morning. Gordon, uh, Painting County Equalization. Um, I have uh, two abatements here. Uh, actually, there's three of them with two different individuals. Uh, one's for Harry and Rosina Hilgeman, parcel 8001296 for $487.74. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second uh, to approve from Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Laster. Um, approve all of them? Do you want to do it's just, just the first one and then the other? Two will do separately, Gordon, because they have different numbers on them. Um, sure, yeah, that works yes, for me. Um, and these were all removed from the county, just so you know. Uh, the other one is Misty Ghost. Uh, one, one second, Gordon. Yeah. Gordon, I've got the motion in a second here to to approve. Uh, is this the 
Hogeman. Hogeman for the four hundred eighty-seven dollars and seventy-four cents. Yes, sir. Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion on that one. Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Now, well, let's go to the second one of the ghost. Okay, and the second one is Misty Ghost, uh, parcel 8010153. Um, this is for two different years, 9872 one year and 10464 another year. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second again from Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Laster to approve the uh, abatements for Ghost. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Item 17, items from the highway department. Joe Miller. It's ghost town this morning. There's nobody <laughs> out there. We just talked about ghosts. Good morning, Commission. <laughs> uh, Joe Miller, Pennington County Highway Department. Uh, up in front of you here is something we do every year. Um, purchase diesel fuel and gas off of the uh, state bid. A couple changes this year. Uh, Harms is still going to be delivering to Rapid. Moyle Petroleum will deliver to Wall. MG Oil will then deliver to Hill City and New Underwood. A um, little fun fact, uh, 2020, this time, the time when we did this last year, diesel was $1.48 per gallon, and this year it's $2.42 a gallon, so up a dollar. Two eighty eight. Um, Gas is it was twenty in twenty twenty was a dollar twelve per gallon when we did this. This year is two dollars and twenty five cents a gallon. So um, your, quite the that's quite the cost. uptick. What's that? That's our cost. That's our cost. Yeah. That's not that again, our cost doesn't have any of the uh the federal road or the tax in it, the fuel tax. Um, because we work on the road so we don't have to pay the road Chairman. tax. Commissioner Eric. Question to Chris. Authorize the highway department to purchase bulk diesel and gas product from state contracts list as follows contract 17564, contract 17568, and contract 17567. I've got a motion from Commissioner Hadcock to approve the purchase of the bulk diesel and gas products. Is there a second? Second. Thank and a second from Commissioner Ross Connect. Mr. Chair. I uh, understand Commissioner LaCroix is abstaining yep. from this vote. So, all the uh, any further discussion? Uh, one question, Commissioner Roskinek. So, roughly, how many uh, gallons of diesel does your department go through in a year? <laughs> Just trying to figure out what the tax savings would be on this. Uh, I, I don't have an an I don't have a good answer for you right now. I'm sure, it's uh, pretty significant, though. I'll have uh, Chris, our accountant, get that number for you, and, and I'll shoot that over to you in an email. Maybe all of you, if you'd like that, please. Okay, perfect. Further questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carried uh, with four votes. Uh, Commissioner LaCroix abstaining from that. Thank you. Item 18, uh, John Morrill. Items from HR. Good morning, Commissioners. John Morrill, Pennington County Human Resources. So today before you, we have an, a request to actually create a position within the Treasurer's Office. Um, at the meeting, uh, the second meeting in May, so on the 18th, you approved the FTE for this position. We didn't have the position actually created yet, so we're actually asking for approval to do that today. Um, this would be an entry-level position within the department to help with those administrative tasks. So the recommended motion is on the, the memo there. I move to approve the Treasury Administrative Assistant one position at a DBM of A13 with a starting rate of 1446 an hour and authorize human resources to update the position listing on file in move, the HR office. Move for approval. I've got a motion by Commissioner LaCroix. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Laster. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, item 19. Request for a variance to Ordinance 14 and approval of the second approach. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Hadcock. Motion is to approve the second approach. Um, it also was, has been okayed with the highway department, meaning they are in agreement with this because of certain circumstances. So I move to re approve the variance. I've got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Laster. Further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Items from the public. 
a good place to move this. Nobody from the public here today. <laughs> uh, items from Commission Manager Holly Hennies. Commissioners, this agenda item is to serve as a request for sponsorship and possible funding for the South Dakota Association of County Commissioners Convention Spouses event. Um, it's my understanding that the board uh, voted to not host this this year. And with the convention being held in Rapid City, we thought it would be a good um, gesture for Pennington County to do so. The Black Hills Association has voted to um, contribute up to $1,000 for this event. And so we're in front of the board today to request sponsorship of that and um, possible funding if we uh, so need it. Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. Moved to sponsor the 2021 SDACC annual convention spouses event and authorized payment of up to 1,000 for expenses if necessary. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Further discussion. Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. I just think it's a good way to show some appreciation uh, to the um, SDACC. And also, um, I think it'll be a good thing for Rapid City um, to do something as from Pennington County because we represent. So thank you, Holly and, yeah. and Lloyd for moving that forward as well. Mr. Thank you, Commissioner LaCroix. I, I agree with Deb. I mean, uh, this is something that, you know, we're hosting, we're a host and something needs to be done to spouses and the South, the, uh, our Black Hills region has stepped up and decided to do something you know and we're bringing all these people and i think coming out of the pandemic is it's it's a well deserved and i think it's a good gesture because the bringing the family members or wives or our spouses gives them something to do while we're in the meetings so uh i think it's going to be well earned and uh, thanks for you guys support and i want to thank joan she joan's tackling this project and organizing it for us so i want to thank her very much so thank you joan you know, I'd like to encourage uh, spouses of the uh, commission, if they would like to be involved, that there's room for them to be involved in this activity also. So. That'd be cool. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Ms. Holly and Joan. Uh, item B, Holly. second item I have in front of you, Commissioners, is the resolution in support of amending South Dakota Codified Law 7-18A-16 um, to establish clear guidance for the time of filing a referendum petition. Um, I can certainly go into any details or I can just answer any questions the board may have with this resolution. I've got a motion from Commissioner Hadcock. Is there a second? Second. And a second from Commissioner LaCroix. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Lassiter. I just have one question, Holly, if you don't mind. Um, as I read through all of this, I mean, I think it's great that we're setting a, a solid date so there's no confusion. Just out of curiosity, did LRC give any input? Did you talk to them just to find out if they had any concerns with that? Or is it something that other places, other um, counties have done it and it's not been an issue? Just kind of wondering. We have not talked to LRC yet. This is just the very beginning start of the process. Um, once this goes, if the board approves it today, it would go to the Black Hills District and then to the state. Um, but no, I have not run it by LRC. Okay, just was one. Thank you. It, it's a pretty simple change, but I think it's, uh, uh, as Holly called this to my attention, I think it's a necessary change to be in there to, to really uh, complete this. <laughs> The word is completed that we're <laughs> adding to it. Yeah. And so uh, uh, I think it's a good move on our part. We've, we've tried to think of every different possibility for the smaller counties in South Dakota. Most of them only have to designate one legal newspaper. So when it's published, it's published. But for us larger ones that have to do multiples, having the word completed gives us the clear direction of when that petition can be filed. So hopefully there wouldn't be any concerns with, with that. Because I think our legals are actually published on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Are, are they we are, commission meeting minutes are Wednesdays and Thursdays. Wednesday and Thursdays? So, okay. Yes. So, further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Items from the chair and commission members. Uh, we'll start with uh, Deb Hadcock. 
So just a question. So the lamplighter in is going to be demolished. Um, so we don't, so we have a clear direction this time. So everybody's on the same page. There's pieces and parts in there that, um, before the owner had gave us, well, the units that those pieces were in, um, are actually uh, beneficial to some of the, not only us, but for the other, um, hotels and stuff instead of just demolishing and throwing them away. Is there any way, um, that we could legally by however we go out for bid or something do something like that just a question we don't have to answer it today instead of throw those away because um like i said they would save us thousands of dollars um taking those uh i don't know what they're called where you put the p-tac in um framing or framing or whatever yeah AC units? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, because the AC units are AC all gone, units. and the guy took a bunch of them, and then we just took whatever was left. But, um, yeah, but those are nice because we are redoing uh, one of our motels, the roofs, the windows, and we could use some of those as well. So um, I think we have to go out for bids or not even bids, just put it out there that if – but I don't know how to do it with not having chaos or, you know, have a bunch of people just go rip apart and – um, our lamp lighter. So if anybody has any suggestions or anything, I think instead of just throwing things away, um, if we could do it somewhat legal or not somewhat, we could do it legal and still be beneficial. <laughs> I don't know what the timetable was on, on that. Oh. Is that... I, I, I have the same question here. I, we'd have to ask Mike or yeah. I mean, we declared we're going to have it destroyed and Mike. taken down. But then when it comes to public property, I, I, I totally agree. If I'm de demol we're demolishing something that we, we can give it away, we try to. Yeah. But it saves us money. We did it with every the... Every corporation's a little bit different. Yeah, we so did Holly, it with the... Could you, could you follow up with the Mike and the state's attorney's office in regard to this as to how we can... Uh... I tried with Mike, but really didn't get anywhere. So if we could do it so we find out um, if we do it and how we can do it. Um, I'm not really getting an answer on Mike. What? Okay. I don't, I don't mean think to wants to do it. Oh. What I mean, what, I think what things that bothers me the most, I, it just brings back a discussion that we had when we were remodeling across the street the care campus with the piece of property. It cost us more money to advertise, do everything, and go out for a bid than what we got. Yeah, but we did it. We we had donation to. Yeah. In some of the houses, do you remember too, that we let the Habitat for Humanity come in and take some of that stuff? So um, I don't know how we did that. So we did kind of two different type of things because George was having a fit that maybe other people might want some of that stuff. So I want to be fair to the public so it doesn't look, you know, conflict of interest or anything. But I, w I would rather not have us just, and it saves us money because we're not throwing all that weight and all that stuff to do with some of the things that are in there. But. Okay, Holly will fo follow up on that and Thank you, bring Holly. back uh, an answer for us. Appreciate that. Other items, Commissioner Adcock? Um, we also did, um, had our meeting with Janelle and um, Long Branch, uh, Kale, and then um, Cullen and me and Brittany and um, Travis. So <laughs> um, What's going to happen is we're going to go through on planning sub regs first because I think that's where the changes need to be. And I believe Colin and um, Brittany and Janelle were all on the same page because if we can make those variances um, more criteria and a different criteria, you wouldn't have so many variances and then you wouldn't have such a strict sub reg where Janelle could kind of work it in where she didn't have to do four different variances to get a sub reg through. So um, anyway... Uh, that me meeting, I think, uh, at first we had a lot of talking first, and then <laughs> after that, I think we all came on the same page that sub regs will be first for our committee. And uh, Colin and Brittany are following, uh, finishing up the first, is it criteria for sub regs or the, yes, for sub regs. And then after that, our committee will go through those and see if we agree with Colin and Brittany on those and anything we could do to help the public and help the the people that use our uh, system the most to make it um, more efficient, um, we are going to try to get that done. Um, Travis, you have anything on that? 
No, I think you covered it all very well, especially <laughs> since I was a little late because I thought I had it on the wrong time starting. So you're okay. We appreciate you. Okay. Anything further? Yeah. Not that I can think of. Thank you, Gary. Any items, Ron, that you have? Uh, the only items I have would just be phone calls relative to uh, condition of the roads, uh, d the addition of delineators. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know these people that uh, don't, don't like it. But I, I just think it's mostly they just don't like the change. But for but for every person that I've talked to that don't like them, there's somebody that does like them. So uh, I think I think uh, after a couple of months. <laughs> That thing will go away, and then, uh, okay, yeah, just uh, answering phone calls, nothing uh, major. Joe, could you come up and, and again tell us how that's working, how that came about in the first place? And Good morning. Joe Miller, Pennington County Highway. Uh, so the sign project was actually in play before I even started. Uh, we applied to, to, to be a part of that grant couple, two, three years before I even started. Um, the state does this project two or three counties every year. Um, they go throughout the state. Uh, basically, so it's a federally funded grant that the state administers. So it's all federal money. It didn't cost the county anything. Um, with federal money being involved, we then have to follow the state's guidelines and the federal guidelines, which is the, the federal guidelines have a, uh, it's about a 300 page binder called the Manifor Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, in which uh, that's where the delineators and all the signing and the sign placement come into play. Um, the state also has their, their regulations on signing and delineation also that we have to follow. Um, you know, Ron, you talk about the delineators, and we just had a meeting, what, last Thursday on this with the state and Ferber Engineering, who's doing the the, the construction engineering on it. Um, I, I like to tell people that I get calls from the delineators, put yourself in an in a emergency responder's position going out to that road. They've never been on that road, and it's dark and say it's a blizzard, put yourself in the worst possible conditions. They need to know when, where the edge of the road is. Those delineators aren't for the people that drive and live that road every day. It's for the, the people that come there and, and don't know the road, and especially your, your emergency responders. They need those to, to know where the road's at. Very good. Sure. Thank you. Commissioner. Where there's a lot of confusion is they go, how can the people think it's county money? And so it's just a matter of, you know, being informed. I'm, I'm saying that. Same thing you did. It's not county money. This is federal money. We have to follow federal rules. So it's just uh, getting the word out. But. Right. Yeah. And, and most people are understanding, you know, they don't like them. And, you know, it's it's trying to find common ground, I guess. It, it, it's, a, it's a good thing in the end. for it. Uh, delineation is, is one of the, the leading fact or uh, roadway crashes, roadway departures are the leading causes in, in highway deaths. And a good cost-effective measure to, to reduce those is delineation. So. so one of the areas where I was getting complaints, I, I got a phone call from a gentleman in that same area, and he said, you know, I'm a truck driver for a living. He said, this is, this is great. You know, he said, we needed this a long time ago. So it was good to get some uh, positive responses as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Without objection, I'd like to invite uh, Planning Commissioner Charlie Johnson to come up. I think he's got a thought or two on this. Planning Commissioner Charlie Johnson, um, I tried to catch up with you, but I was a little late this morning. There's an oversight that happened in this sign thing that, that I don't think you're aware of right now. The new Mystic speed is 50 again, and they're checking the speed. Uh, the c speed limit signs were changed to the 50 because this contract was so old. So they took down the 40s and put 50s up. And that they're also checking the speed, so you're going to get a false report. Uh, there's two speed um, meters in it. So I'll leave it go with that. But I felt you needed to know right away. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have uh, Eric get those changed. Thank you for the pointing that out. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Have you noticed any uh, excess of uh, OHV traffic on the Mystic? I think it's working, uh, to be honest. Uh, there's there's still a lot of the uh, ATV and UTV or side-by-side -side traffic, but I do think it's keeping the dust down. 
uh, some. I think the people that are living along there have noticed because when I get up to 45, I know I slow down right away. I was one of the offenders that rolled 50 all the time. I'd, I'd have to throw myself under the bus. So, But I do... Uh, that's how I noticed the 50 went back up. It just went up Friday. And I'm sure the ATVs, UTVs are already flying 50 again. So I just wondered if you've noticed any more volume in the, in the machines. Yes, a lot. <laughs> well, that was a great. lot. There's a lot of pent up demand for the use of their machines out there right now, just like there is pent up demand for everything else. And, oh, and uh, mm -hmm. but I do want to throw in a comment since you asked that. If the government would just support the with requirements on those machines, the problem would be greatly reduced. They're getting bigger and bigger machines and more horsepower. Now I have them. I can hear them from everywhere. We're getting horsepower like 110, 120 horsepower in these things. That's, a, that's beyond use. When people buy that kind of machine, pay that much money, they want to make sure that it works. You don't see a clean one. That's another thing. We're seeing mud on all these machines. And so there's some places where they shouldn't be. But there's nobody out there enforcing this. And they could do it easily. They only have three people. All they have to do is go where they park them. I did talk to a couple of friends that were in that uh, Slate Creek Dam area, and they did run into a Pennington County Sheriff in a 900 razor. So when they saw that sheriff emblem, they uh, double looked. So, and looks, so the sheriff was out. Looks like Joe went and called on your, your uh, 40 mile an hour. <laughs> and then uh, you had a call. One of your constituents called me, Ron, and um, unfortunately I was gardening and I hung up on him and then um, I erased all my contacts. So if he says I didn't call him back, it's because I didn't know which one was him. <laughs> I like, I raced all my contacts at, um, at the same time. So Thank you, Charlie. It was on Rochford Road, one of your yeah. constituents. Probably one of my road calls. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Roskinek, do you have anything um, further yeah, thanks. on? Just so you didn't think I'd okay. um, I do have, uh, I've been uh, meeting with uh, several legislators on an uh, infrequent basis talking about uh, housing, affordable and workforce housing. Uh, the legislators are trying to work on uh, an effort to bring about uh, uh, some housing dollars potentially uh, to Western South Dakota. And so just trying to uh, familiarize them with the uh, issues that we have not only uh, well, throughout, throughout Pennington County, uh, and they're interested in more than just Pennington County, but so trying to take into consideration all these uh, our small towns too. And so what Wall provided this morning is, is beneficial for that also. Commissioner LaCroix. Uh, you know, I really don't have anything to add. I will add that I think on June 15th, we're gonna have the Youth City Council over at the CARE campus and touring uh, uh, One Heart and so forth, but they're doing a tour of the city facilities, the wastewater treatment, doing some other things. So they're gonna come over and since they got a mental health group and some other ones, uh, Barry's gonna give a good presentation of what they do there and what's all available. So I think that's that's gonna be a really good thing and, and I really appreciate our staff and Holly and everybody for stepping up and, and helping out with this uh, thing. It, it's fantastic to, have, to see young people have that kind of interest in what's going on. So. Um, with that, I, I, I'll save some of the mine for under reports as far as, okay. I think I got the same phone call Dave did. Okay. I didn't hang up on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Commissioner Lasseter. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, yes, I did get a few calls on the road um, for ATVs and stuff as well uh, over the last week. Um, but the, the update that I want to talk about that I've been working on is the, um, the water situation, the uh, PFOS, PFOA. So I do know that um, all y'all received a book about a month ago, month and a half ago, they kind of outlined the uh, restoration plan for the area. I do know that the base is given uh, award of the contract for section D and C in that binder to be done. So that, so they actually have awarded a contract for that restoration program right now. So we do know that's in the process. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from the EPA. They were expecting a, a follow-up 
uh, response to their questions uh, from the base. And then uh, the day was uh, last week, but the the, the office, the, those that were in the EPA office were out of office. And I expect that I'll be visiting with them this week and then I can give you more of a report of moving forward. But just to kind of give you an overview of that they have awarded a contract and they're starting the restoration project uh, in C and D sections, not A and B yet. I guess there's still some more trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. Um, and then some of the new individuals that that have popped up since they put that plan together. I think it was September of 2020. Um, they're having to put together another plan for those individuals that have uh, been infected or in, impacted since their plan of action was was uh, instituted. So, very good. Nice. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank Item 23: you. Approval of the vouchers. We have vouchers in the amount of five hundred fifty-eight thousand one hundred forty-three dollars and fifteen cents. Do I have a motion? So moved. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Hadcock. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item 24, request for refund of application fee for Swedeland. Um, Janelle, Janelle Fink from Fisk Land Surveying. Good morning, Commissioners. You're going to get tired of me, I think. <laughs> no, we're not. We won't Fine. get tired of you. I appreciate you taking the time to hear this request. Um, I'm asking for a refund of an application fee for a second um, variance, subdivision variance that was required for these landowners. Um, the first variance was for improvement of a section line right of way and the second variance was for percolation tests and soil profiles. And I have personally been having some disagreement with the way that planning staff and legal counsel has determined that each variance must be on a separate application. Heretofore, we used to address variances, multiple variances on the same application. If it was the same landowner, same property, we could ask for as many variances as we needed. I went back and kind of looked in my recent past history. I pulled like the last 26 projects that I've worked on in Pennington County. Um, five of those projects had zoning variances. 16 of them had subdivision variances. Only one application had two variances. Oh, excuse me. Two applications had one variance. Four applications had two variances. Six of them had three variances. Um, three applications had four variances and one actually had six variances. And that's that, that which would amount to, under the current plan, it would cost $1,920 if you have paid the $420 plus the $300 per separate application. The one that required six variances was a consolidation of two large parcels in a rural area, and we needed, like, percolation tests, topography, plat scale, road improvements, dead end, and a turnaround exception. And this was all for somebody to consolidate a large holding in a rural area into a single lot. And we've managed to do that over time without any problem and seem to act on that pretty well. Legal counsel says that you need to act on them separately. I believe that that is based in his opinion and not specifically in state law. It does not say, it does not speak to that you can only handle one. It talks about variances in a plural format, as does our zoning ordinance and our subdivision ordinance. It transfers in and out between the plural and the singular. I also did a little research this morning. I called nine other counties to ask how they handle these things. I called Lincoln, Minnehaha, Brown, Lawrence, Mead, Custer, Yankton, Coddington, and Brookings. So nine kind of random counties. Um, just for your information, the fees range, three of the counties charge $100 for variance applications. Five of the counties charge 250. Only one county, Yankton County, charged more than Pennington County. They charge 450. We currently charge 420 right now. Out of the counties that had zoning ordinances, because not every county has zoning ordinance, like Meade County, everyone that I asked if you can do multiple variances on the same application, all of them that had zoning ordinances answered affirmatively that yes, you can do more than one variance on the same application. Now, they're all over the board for certified notices and sign. 
um, for subdivision variances of the nine counties that I polled, only two handled them the same way that we currently do, where you're, you're repeating the process that you do with the zoning variance. The rest of the counties dealt with them in a different format, like exceptions. And we talked a little bit about this before you were at the meeting, whereby our subdivision ordinance that regulates the way we develop land has things like road development improvements and requirements in there, how wide the road, the vertical curves and, you know, horizontal alignment, those types of things. And they deal with those not in a variance format, but they manage to deal with those in an exception format, similar to the city of Rapid City. Now, I'm not here today to say we can solve the problem but I'm saying we're working on it. And I don't think that we have fully vetted or explored this option. And part of what we're gonna do as a committee is continue to look at this. And I'm here to ask you today to hold on the policy for charging two separate variance fees or application fees until we resolve this, until we fully vet what the requirement is and what it should be and what options you have as commissioners, what latitude that you have. So um, I'm here on behalf of my applicant to request that you refund the 420 duplicate application fee that I paid for this second subdivision variance. So Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Edgar. Um, so I think we don't give back application fees as far as I know. I know we give penalty fees, but Brittany, um, can you tell me why you have the application fee and the difference between the application and the penalty and what your, what your feelings are? Sure. The application fee is separate from a penalty fee under section 511. There's no provision for us to refund application fees, only penalty fees. So um, Brittany, that's under section S. Let me ask you another question. So we decided a while ago that we were going to charge for our time at planning for various applications or various, um, basically based on staff time. Um, tell me your reasoning behind why we ended up moving it um, higher. Um, back in the day of the um, application fee and why that was brought forward. And I think if I'm correct, uh, the full board agreed with it. So this application fees for variances has not changed since 2007, okay. uh, this $300. That includes um, publication fees. So in this case, we've already paid the publication fee, fee and the staff time has already been expended. So, so by refunding this, the, the onerous essentially will go on the general public instead of the actual application because we've already paid the three advertising fees to the newspapers. Um, staff time has already been... Um, so legally, you have to do it three times to be legal for the... We have to do it in the three legal newspapers. Okay, and how much does that usually run? Um, for variances, it's about $48. A time? A time. Or for all of it? Or for all of it, for the okay. one time. And then staff time is doing what? Uh, the staff time is writing the staff report, um, and then we do route it around to the interdepartmental um, and other departments. So it, there's highway staff time when they review it. Um, there's staff time with the Register of Deeds, with equalization. So it has to do with just other staff time when they review it and look at it for any of the considerations or comments that they would make. Have we gave application fees back before? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, Only just penalty, penalty fees. fees. Thank you. For the questions the commission has. Mr. Chair. Commissioner LeCroy. I guess my... Janelle, I mean, your clients got to love you as much as hard as you fight for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we love her. <laughs> but no, I, I, I feel what you're saying. I, I really do. I, it's unfortunate that all of a sudden we, we changed what we were doing before, but I do think there's some things that we could probably change, and I hope this group can come together with something. I think, if, you know, if you have, I think doing the legal part, or if you have to do them separately, that's fine, but just as like we're, what we're looking on here, we should be able to group one in for advertising all together. If you do them all at once, advertising together, uh, the mailings all one together, uh, that type of thing instead of the sign be advertised for each and every one. I think there's some way we could probably come up to, with that. But that's what I'm looking at. But I mean, I, I do hear what you're saying. It, it's, 
and thanks for the information that you just provided. I mean, one applicant just combined and do six, four variances that you had to do and something we encourage them to do. You know what I'm saying? So. I appreciate your comments and I do want to clarify that staff doesn't require that we post separate signs and we are able to mail in the same notice, but they charge us an additional $300 for each application. Oh, for 300 So, yeah. And the $1,900 for the lot consolidation didn't include the fee for the layout plat and then the fee for the minor plat, so, which was another um, $500 on top of that. Gotcha. Another correct. So, Janine, listen to what you said. They're kind of doing what they're doing. What is your thoughts of, uh, of the fairness of staff time? If, you, if you're doing four to six and you're combining them all and they're doing, shouldn't there be a little extra, you know, the compensation for doing four? You, you know, I'm not, I don't do the work every day. You guys do this stuff. It comes easy for some of you, but... Um, don't you think it would be fair, not only for the taxpayers, if that person's, if you're doing four variance and they have to research and reevaluate, shouldn't it be more than just one normal charge? Shouldn't it be like a hundred bucks per one or something along those lines? Just my thought. You know, if there were a more modest fee for the secondary ones, I, I would find that to be acceptable. Um, prior to this, we were charging $250 for the subdivision variances because we weren't doing notification and, and those types of things. So it went from $250 to $420 plus an additional $300 per each. And that's, I think, where, you know, the, the heartburn is and the, and the difficulty is. And I think that we just really haven't taken the time to explore and vet how we can... Um, help staff, but yet not penalize the public. And with our subdivision ordinance, even the changes that they're talking about making, like pulling the percolation test and soil profiles out, those things will be a help. But we have such an incredibly diverse geography in our, in our county that those road development ordinances just we can't hit those all the time. We, we just literally, you cannot do a one size fits all ordinance. And so we're running into those exceptions all the time. And I just think we need to work harder at finding a way that's not so punitive to the individual who wants to do those, whether, whether they're, you know, planning a bunch of lots or doing a simple consolidation so or Jim. adjustment. I agree with you, Janelle, but I also believe that we don't have inspectors and we don't have other things. So some of that stuff on variances, um, you're asking for exceptions to some of that stuff that we can't really look at later. So uh, to have it more detailed and to have it basically with a fee on the upfront instead of nothing on the backside, because the fees and things that you would pay after the fact for inspectors and everything else that we don't have, I think might equalize that out in a certain extent. Do I believe we can do better? Do I believe we can do some criteria changing and some sub regs? I, I believe we could. But some of that stuff you're missing because Pennington County, in, in some senses, or even counties, um, are having major problems with building on roads and, um, and uh, <laughs> housing and, and commercial and how they're built and other people accepting that. Or basically what we're having and we know that all of us do, is they're just doing it anyway. So um, maybe because they have to pay a variance fee, maybe they have to, or extra variance fees, they have to build, pay building permits, but whatever's happening, um, people are also getting that, that other side that's saving them a lot more money. So changes suck in one sense, and the other, I truly believe we can change that criteria to help but I don't think it's going to take it all away. I think some of that is needed. I'm on both your guys' side for um, Brittany's and yours, that we can do that criteria better and more efficient, but also make sure that staff time and that uh, energy that they put into it. And that was the main thing when I was working with planning, and that's when PJ was there as well, that um, they were doing a lot of work and pictures and different things and going out four or five, sometimes eight or ten times, because I know, because I went out four or five times with just a couple of things. That takes a lot of staff time away from other people. So can we maybe combine variances and do it a little bit different? Yeah, but I think um, there's a happy medium. I don't think you're wrong. I don't think she is. I think we just need to find a common ground. Today, for me, 
Um, the application fee, I'd leave the same, but um, if we did anything, I would probably do the 120. So just, uh, and then look at what we can do, bring back as a subject, or looking at the sub regs, if we need to do something different to change that in between, or if Brittany has other ideas, so we're not like doing them separately or something different when we meet. But today I'd, I'd probably keep the application fee off if it was me. So what Commissioner Adcock is suggesting is to request a refund of uh, $120 for the Swedland subdivision variance. With Mr. Chair, I'd make that, right. I'd make the motion to return $120. That'd be the signed deposit and uh, property owner's list return. Second. I've got a motion and a second to return $120. Uh, further discussion? Motion is by Commissioner LaCroix, second by Commissioner Hadcock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. I take a uh, motion for a recess. I'll move. Uh, I've got a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. You need a motion to go into Board of Adjustment. Moved. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner LaCroix. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Good morning, Commissioners. Jason. Jason Thennison, Assistant Planning Director, Agenda Item A is variance 21 0. Jason, let me interrupt you just yes, a second. Since we've just come back and we've got some new people in the room, I just want to point out there are speaker request forms in the back of the room. Uh, if, you, if there's any of these particular things that are coming up that you'd like to speak on, just ask you to fill out a speaker request form. Bring them up to Holly uh, on your right, and uh, we'll try to accommodate you. Thank you. Sorry, Jason. All right, North. All right. Agenda item A is variance 21-03 to allow 77 units on a den and own system in lieu of 40 units. The applicants are Ian and Brad Estes. Their agent is Fisk Land Surveying. Janelle's in the audience. If you have any questions for her, and staff recommends to continue this request to the July 20th, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting per the applicant's request. So moved. I've second. got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner LaCroix to continue to the July 20th, 21 uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. For the discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Item Chair. B. You Pardon? had a speaker request form for item A. We should allow them I'm to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do. Uh, Lois Vogel. Vogley. Good morning. Sorry. Overlooked. All right. It. Thank you. I wanted to clarify something that I had said at the meeting in April when I mentioned that uh, the Schroeder house had burned during the Westbury fire. It was the only house that burned totally to the ground, but there was other damage to other properties in that, on that part of the road. And then I'd just like to remind you that uh, some of our concerns in the neighborhood for the rezoning of this property are um, flood because the young man who drowned actually lived on this property that is being, uh, for which the request has been made. Uh, secondly, I would like to remind you of the difficulty with that road because there's such a blind curve right adjacent to this property, basically. And there are also water concerns if there were to be a large increase in population in that area. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Item B. <laughs> Item B is variance VA 21-09. It is to reduce the minimum required lot size from 10 acres to 2.38 acres and 2.3 acres in a general or in an agriculture district. The applicant and landowner is Shane and Chad Sweedland. The agent is Fist Land Surveying. Janelle is in the audience if there's any questions. 
When approving variances, we look at two prongs. For prong number one, whether granting the variance runs counter to public interest. Number one, the request is not a blight on the neighborhood and does not appear to be a threat of a nuisance. Number two, the subject property is zoned agriculture district. The surrounding properties are, are also zoned agriculture district with lot sizes under 10 acres with residential uses. The lot sizes range from three to 20 acres. Lots are under 20, that are under 10 acres requirement are legal non-conforming. Number three, the zoning ordinance for agriculture district requires a 10 acre lot size. Number four, the current comprehensive plan identifies the property as rural residential district, which requires a three acre minimum lot size. Proposed lots one and two will be 2.38 acres. Number five, lot size does not harm the public safety, health, or general welfare of the community. However, granting this variance would grant agriculture district, agriculture uses on a lot under the required size. These uses could conflict with the residential uses in the neighborhood and cause a nuisance. For prong number two, whether a special condition exists to grant a variance. Number one, exceptional narrowness, topography, and siting or like does not affect the zoning or the lot size of a property. Currently, the property is vacant of any structure. There are no set on the, there's no septic on the property. The, on May 18th, 2021, the Board of Adjustment approved subdivision regulation variance SB 21-09 and 21-10 to waive percolation test and profile hold information and to waive the requirement to dedicate and improve a section line right away. Proposed lots one and two will both be 2.38 acres and are vacant on any structures. This was right around for under department review. No objections or concerns were received. On December 15th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved layout plan LPL 21-35. Surrounding properties are zoned agriculture district. However, the properties are being used as residential. On January 5th, 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved variance VA 21-21 to allow two lots to be 2.5 acres in the general agriculture district. It was determined after approval of this variance when the property was created, not enough right away was dedicated, which takes the lots to 2.3 acres instead of the 2.5, which was approved. Allowing the lots to stay as an agriculture district would allow an agriculture use on properties that do not meet Section 205 of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. The property could be rezoned to low density residential district and meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance and a comprehensive plan amendment would be required. Therefore, staff is recommending denial as there is no special condition that exists on the property to grant this variance request and the applicant has, oops, sorry. The applicant has the option to rezone and obtain a comprehensive plan amendment. Chairman. Questions, Cody. Commissioner Adcock. Is this the one that we're basically accessory building to take care of their family? Is that this one? No, no that's a, um, that's Keith Lau. That's a plat that's going to be later on in this meeting. Okay, that was the one with the, with the young man that wanted to stay on the property and help take mm -hmm. care of the family. Cur that was Lau. Correct, I believe that's okay. what you're referring to. Yes. And so, why didn't this one do a rezone? The, they they haven't. This one's requesting. They're platting two lots. Okay. Um, and right now it's currently it's, it can be zoned agriculture district, and they're going to be which requires ten acre lot size, and the lots are going to be two point three acres. So instead of requesting the rezone, they're requesting a lot size variance. They can stay ag. Does those two point three eight stay in the ag? Then? It would stay ag, yes. So then later on, if it came in, it would still be ag until they decided to change it basically on a rezone again. Later. If they ever, re if they ever rezoned it or subdivided in the future. Okay. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Roskinek, I just want to point out the neighbors uh, surrounding this property. I've been out to the property. I've visited with the neighbors they're just really concerned with two things one one would be waste because of the proximity to the little creek there uh flooding and uh you know what could happen to their wells so i just want to point that out mr chairman commissioner lasher cody i have a question you know correct me if i'm wrong if i'm following this the correct way they're currently zoned general ag so currently they're zoned um, rural residential. Okay. On, on June 23rd, um, the, the zoning districts will, will switch and this will be agriculture. So they're requesting to stay ag because on the 23rd it goes back to ag and this would be effective after the 23rd date. 
Okay, that's where I was getting lost because I'm like, it looks like it's zoned rural residential, and it is, but whatever, everything changes. I got what you're saying. Okay, appreciate okay. it. So, Chairman? Mr. Edgar. Is this the one with the guy across the street said all the flooding over there and mm -hmm. that he used to own the land and then yep. the top of it was higher and there was yep. going to be yes. issues and that, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And now they want to split the land into 2.38 each and each have a parcel on this property, the brothers. Correct, yes. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner LaCroix. So, Cody, this came before us January 5th of 2021, and we approved the variance to take it to 2.5. Mm -hmm. And right now, from my understanding, there was not enough right away dedicated, and that's why it's changed at 2.37, and that's why we're actually here today, is because not enough right away was dedicated from the two. Correct. In the... Um... In the past, when those lots were originally created, not enough right away was was dedicated out of out of out of it. Um, so when the applicant hired the surveyor to go out there and, and check it out, it was determined that that right away wasn't there, and they had done that after they approved the 2.5 acres for agriculture. Um, but since they have to dedicate more right away, it takes them to 2.38. Okay. Well, chairman. Surveyor. Uh, Janelle Fink is here. I think she might be able to clear some of this up, too. So the other thing is, if record. that water is coming from um, the individual that had talked about that, it all goes on to their land, and we've had problems with drainage. Do we require anything else different? Because then we are, as asked Jill, um, cleaning off roads in, in different areas because of um, the gravel and everything that runs downhill. So... Um, this I know this is about Commissioner LaCroix is right about the right of way, but I did forget at one time that this was gonna be a be an issue with the drainage that comes all and you already know, water goes to the creek. And we've done this before where I, I don't know if you build your house up or we've had it in north of town where all the drainage comes and lands on their land and then they're blaming the neighbors and everybody else and the highway department and stuff because of the water drainage. So just uh, understanding that um, this older gentleman that was in here, uh, cowboy guy, I don't remember his name and I apologize, in respect, that was his family family's land and that's a flooding area. And he said, if you don't think it's gonna flood, you need to come see my area that it comes across my road all the way in there and my gravel, most of my gravel's across in that area where we want to let them build. So just a heads up, if there's anything that we have to require or have an understanding that if this is built on, um, that, you know, there's going to be issues and that it's not counties or neighbors' issues when you're building on the area where we're trying to forewarn you. So, again, this is about right away, but... It's also about an understanding that people, when they're building on stuff, we did give you a heads up before you started um, this project. And if you wanted to continue building, um, that your liability would be on you, not Pennington County or your neighbors. So, Janelle, would you like to uh, hear the agent for this? Yes, Surveying good morning. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I would offer just a couple comments. I'll start with the floodplain comments. Um, this is a, an unstudied area on um, FEMA designates saying that there's floodplain on the area, but it's up to the owners of the individual to do the analysis and study where it is, yes, which we did and advised our clients that they would need that in order to build on the property. They have to go to secure a floodplain development permit application. And actually the analysis on the property bears out that the floodplain that graphically shows on rapid map, which is an unstudied line, is actually... Um, the, the actual floodplain is somewhat narrower, so there is actually more building area on the east side of the lot that's outside of the studied area. So we've gone through this with the clients. They understand they'll have to go through whatever processes are, are necessary to get their building permits. Well, Ms. Janelle, the bottom line is, is number one, you're, if it comes across the road, um, forewarned by a man that mm -hmm. um, I think knows his stuff, and that water doesn't come in just a little wave, it it comes pretty good. Um, and it's not just on that property, it's on his that crosses it to mm -hmm. a certain extent. Number two, then that 
water is either going downhill one way or another. And so once you start building on stuff, you start, you know that, you start affecting your neighbors and other people with, with that change. So main thing is, and you do this for a living, so I trust you and always have, that when they do build, um, they they take that in consideration. Yeah. Yes, we've advised them accordingly. And uh, we regulate for the 100-year or 1% chance flood event. We have 500-year flood events in microcosms all the time. Gully washer, frog, frog strangler, whatever you want to call it, where you can get these hard down pours and, and outbursts, and then you can have more water for a short duration than is in, in all kinds of areas that are outside of what FEMA regulates and outside of what the county regulates. So has, has they maybe had at a certain time, you know, again, one of these microcosm events that caused more runoff, surely that, you know, that can happen. I would just have you um, visit with the young man across the street. <laughs> Yeah, the the man that had yeah. visited with us and it's his land and he's been there. I tell people if you want to trust somebody, trust somebody that's uh, knows the land and has been on that land and their family for hundreds of years. So we will be sure to pass that along. Um, in regard to the lot size variance, I'm going to have to resist, try to resist the impulse somewhat to ask for a refund on this application as well. The Swedlands came to the planning office prior to contacting us. And they asked general questions. What do I need to do to subdivide this property? And they were told that they would either need to rezone or get a subdivision variance to the lot size. The rezone would have come with a comprehensive plan amendment, and that fee would have been $420 plus the $120 for the comp plan amendment, or they could do the lot size variance for a lesser fee. And so they chose the lot size variance. Now those two options weren't wrong options to present to them, the staff that told them you need to rezone or get a lot size variance. But what wasn't included is potentially there are things that happen that can affect the lot size variance. And without having the survey done, they didn't know or understand, staff didn't research this and nor would I expect them to research this at the counter, that the existing right-of-way was only 30 feet wide and we would need to dedicate additional right-of-way. So in good faith, they make the application, they go through the process for the variance. In January, you grant it to them. We come and do the survey and that yields different results. The road's not wide enough, we have to dedicate some additional right-of-way, so we're back here again. Um, possibly because they didn't have enough information to make an informed decision at that time. So I'm not going to ask for the refund, <laughs> but these are, these are the kind of situations that, that make, you know, that seem reasonable to me. But I hope that you will support the variance again. The intent was when you acted in January to allow them approximately a 2.5 acre lot. It will now be a 2.3 will be 2.3 acre lot. So I hope that you will support the variance again. Thank you. Questions of Janelle? Thank you, Janelle. Appreciate it. So based on that, Chairman, I have a motion. And your motion is? Based on the condition and exception narrow as topography sitting uh, existing on the property, number one, they have a change of right of way, so that's um, a condition. And enforcing the ordinance, enforcing the ordinance creates an unnecessary hardship. The hardship would be that at that time they didn't have the survey done, and at this time they need that right of way in order to move forward. And does it observe the ordinance spirit while doing substantial justice? Yes, it does. So it allows them to keep moving forward uh, based on um, the condition of the right way and the area that they need to uh, get this um, property moving forward. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Item C. Item C is variance VA 21-110. It is to allow less than one acre lot size for a vacation home rental. The applicant and landowner is Randall Wheaton. The agent is Natalie Wheaton. She's in the audience if there's any questions. 
when approving variances, we look at two prongs. Prong number one, whether granting the variance runs counter to public interest. Number one, the request is not a blight on the neighborhood and does not appear to be, does not appear to injure the neighborhood. Number two, the subject property is owned rural residential district. The surrounding properties in the area are also zoned rural residential and are under three acre lot size. <laughs> there are no other VHRs being operated in the neighborhood that are under one acre in size. Number three, the zoning ordinance for rural residential district requires a three acre lot size. The zoning ordinance requires a one acre minimum for a vacation home rental. Number four, the current comprehensive plan identifies the property as rural residential district, which requires a three acre minimum lot size. The property is 0 0.93. Number five, lot size does not harm public safety, health, or general welfare of the community. And prong number two, does a special condition exist to grant a variance? Exceptional narrowness, topography, siting, or alike does not affect the lot size of a subject property. Also, the landowner owns the adjacent property to the east and could adjust lot lines or consolidate into one lot to meet the one acre lot size requirement for the vacation or rental. Currently on the property, there is a single family residence that was built in 1961 and a 544 square foot attached deck. There is an on-site wastewater treatment system and a variance VA 1906 to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to two feet for an existing deck and residence. This was routed around for interdepartment review. No objections or concerns were received. Section 319B3 requires that a vacation home rental in an agriculture or residential district be a minimum of one acre. The subject property is 0 0.93 acres. The applicant has the ability to move a lot line or consolidate two lots in order to create a parcel that is one acre and would meet the required lot size for a vacation home rental. Staff has received two letters of opposition to the request. Um, and staff is recommending denial of VA 21-10 as the applicant has the ability to plat and create a one acre parcel. Questions to Cody? Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Commissioner Lasser. Cody, where's that second parcel that you're talking about that they could extend or whatnot? Uh, it's this one right here to the east. Do they own that? Uh, Randall Wheaton does own that. He actually received a um, new on-site wastewater treatment system. That's where his new septic sat that was placed just earlier this year. Okay. Okay. I have uh, two speaker request forms here on this. Uh, first one is uh, Natalie Wheaton. Natalie. Good morning. I'm Natalie Wheaton. I'm the owner-operator of the Energy Brook Inn. Um, and I have a feeling that this meeting is a little bit of my fault. Um, when I submitted the applications for the vacation rental with the state, I was not aware that I needed a separate application with the county. We did pass the health inspection and we did receive the state license to operate. Um, and then we received the letter that we're not in compliance with the county zoning requirement. Um, I... Because we have two lots that are inseparable right now because of the new septic system that we put in for the vacation rental, that actually was the sole reason of putting in the new septic system. Um, I believe that we can just acquire a variance to operate on, um, really operate on both lots. We don't have a way to operate on just one lot. Um, and we don't have really a way to separate these lots or ever in the future sell one lot as a result um, operating on the lot under one acre. Um, because of the existence of the new septic system, there is still an old septic system that is in existence and um, um, there has been an issue with it. Um, that septic system did not support the amount of flow that we had, which is why the new one was put in, but the old septic system is also operational. Um, what I would like to point out is, um, although there's no uh, vacation rentals on the lot size under one acre within the proximity, um, the uh, size of our lot that's presented here is 
0.93 acres, which is very close to one acre. Um, and um, we do have an option of including the second um, plot in. However, it was my understanding that that is quite a lengthy process. And that was the whole reason of us trying to go with the variance is to try and uh, allow us to operate as we already obtained the state license and uh, went through um, water treatment system testing and made sure our water is good and drinkable and we comply with every other regulation um, on this matter really. And um, there's also a concern, um, we did receive the complaint, copy of the complaint letter, there's a concern that we may operate more than one unit. As it stands right now, there's only one unit, uh, which is one bedroom and one bathroom. We only allow a maximum of five occupants in the unit, which most of uh, most of the time it's two to four. Um, there is no laundry operating on in the unit, the, uh, so we do not allow our guests to do their own laundry on site. Um, there's no tub in the unit, so the only uh, water flow is from the shower um, and the toilet. Um, the kitchen is also not, not a full kitchen, it's a kitchenette with just the sink available to do dishes. Um, th we only allow one parking spot per um, visiting family. Uh, we do not allow multiple vehicles on the property. Uh, the other vehicles that are parked there ever are our own personal vehicles as we live on the property as well. Um, there is three operational bedrooms that are in use right now. Um, and uh, yes, as of right now, this is what all we're asking for. Chairman. All right, Commissioner Edgar. So you need point, what, point 0.7 acres to, to finish the lot in order to have an acre? Yes. Um, and the process, maybe Cody, you could run me through that process. Um, and you're already operating this thinking that you didn't need a permit, which you aren't the first one that has said that not <laughs> people try to do it illegally, but they forget that Pennington County has an ordinance as well. Um, Cody, so tell me what they'd have to do for that 0 0.7 acres. 0 0.07. 07, sorry. Uh, to get that 0.07, they'd either have to consolidate those two lots or adjust the lot line to the east. What would be um, that process? Like how long? It would be the normal process? platting process. It would be th three, four months, depending on how fast um, people can get stuff in. However, it wasn't when Dwayne contacted the applicants back in April, okay. it was brought up that they had that option. Um, so, and it was stated to them multiple times that they could have started this process a couple months ago. Um, also, there is other lots or other requests that are similar to this that the for variance for lot size under one acre that the board has denied. One was actually 0 0.93 acres, the same as this lot, where the board requested that they go work with their uh, neighboring properties to obtain more land to meet that one acre lot size. Unfortunately, um, I haven't um, agreed to that only because I told when we did this ordinance that I'd keep it at an acre. Um, the other thing is I see your hardship because you're trying to run a business that you thought you could run. But I also know that we have the rules and regulations at an acre for a reason. And as much as I'd like to give you this, I, I probably won't be able to, at least I'm one of five, just because of our regs. And Coach just told me you could have started that process a couple months ago before this all followed through. Miss Natalie, so how come um, back a couple months ago that you didn't feel that you wanted to do that? Yes, sir. Are you with Miss Natalie? This is uh, Randall. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, when I bought What's your place, name, I, sir? What's your Randy name? Wheaton, Randall Wheaton. Randall? Okay, thank you, Randall. When I bought the property, I had it all surveyed, and, you know, it was $2,000. It's like, I'm never going to sell that other piece of property. Well, because, like she said, it has the the new septic on it right now, I mean, I, and I don't want to sell it. I never would sell it, but okay. I'm not sure if I could even build anything on it or not because it's under an acre, but I just didn't want to take all the expense. I had enough expense. To, I don't want to try to change it when... I mean, there's plenty of room there. There's lots of room for, for people in parking. Right. But and we I'm run. I'm going to tear the shop down and move it back, too, out of the way, so I have more room. But we, we, we run an ordinance for a reason. 
and then we don't let people but do so, that. But I had a question. Yes, sir. So if I just turn this into a monthly rental, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Does that make any sense to you? No, it hasn't since no. it's done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I do my rentals, neighbor so. rather have cars there year-round and maybe three or four more cars year-round? Sir, I'm not in disagreement with you. It's just they made it for a reason for so people would have that space. And in this case, it doesn't work for your space because there's lots of space. But unfortunately... Yeah. Um, and I'd like to go your way because it seems like a common sense thing in one sense. And the other, um, then the next person would tell me it was common sense. So, um, again, a couple months ago, this process, it probably didn't make sense because, like you said, well, I could just, sense, I'm just going to rent it out for the summer program. or whatever. Yeah. Right. And you can do that for, I think, two weeks or six weeks or something. But um, for future, I guess I would I would change it now just to make sure it was in compliant. And then um, also, if you ever sold it with the septic and any, anything on it, because today you might feel great and wonderful, but next yeah. six years you might not be doing so well. So um, what I tell people is, is plan for the future. So, and, Mr. And Mr. Wheaton, good. so what size is that other lot, second lot? 0. 0.77. 0. 0.77. And Point you know, the, the lot runs basically almost, you know, almost through the house. Or When I had it surveyed, it's actually... Three foot outside the house, but okay, Commissioner. But they got showing going right through there, but it just seems like a waste of time and money to do that when you can Thank just you. get a variance and then be done. But Commissioner Lacroix. Well, sometimes things like this make us do what we need to do to to make things. I'm, I'm tell, I'll tell you one other thing too. I mean, I worked over in the coal mines. My job got gone. My son' job. He, he worked in the oil field. That's gone. This apartment pays our bills. Yes, I, I know. Mo I was mostly. just getting ready to speak for you, but yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to continue? You can. <laughs> Actually, I just drove by this. I mean, I remember this because we had problems with the deck. We, mm -hmm. we set, did the setbacks and so forth. So one of my questions will be: I, I think it makes sense to combine them mm -hmm. and get it all underneath one roof and do what you need to do. I, I fully support what you're doing. It, it makes sense in that area to, to do a vacation home rental with that property. I mean, it, it's yeah. four months out of the year, they're staying a week, yeah. less traffic, yeah. and it helps you guys, yeah. the income part of it. I understand all of that. But as Ms. Hancock said, you know, we have this regulation and you're living on right next to the property right now, yeah. correct? So yeah, I, I mean, live in, I you're live in the there basement. seeing yeah. what's going on, and that's different from any a lot of the other ones that we have problems with. The owners aren't living on the property, yeah. so that's a plus. But um, I mean, I, since I bought the place, I've been just trying to improve everything. You we've, you have we've cleaned up our creek, yeah, and gotten rid of all the brush and, and the shrub, and that goes to goes one by. of the points that I wanted to explain to some of these people. You know that. <laughs> concerned about vacation rentals or short-term <coughs> rentals is that you've taken better more care of it than someone that who's actually living there because that really it could be an undesirable for a person to look full around they leave it if you go down hill so you can see what's neglected who lives there and what's not you know. okay. commissioner LaCroix, can i ask you a question can you do a non-access easement on a property to make that other point zero seven i <laughs> just checking. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just knowing the air. Part of the lot, right? I just drove it this weekend, and, and, and I remember his property and the problems that we had with the deck and shortening it up yeah. and so forth. And you look in that area, you look, you can tell some areas have been long-term because me, me and the wife are looking around, and we can tell what's what, you know. Some are neglected terribly. And those are some... Some, not all of them, but I mean, see, it, but people want to blame vacation rentals as being, as being a problem, a short term rental has been a problem. Well, if you look around, you see them, they're all fixed up and cleaned up, and it's people more or less the people living there have been there longer. It, they get a bad rep for it. These guys are, are living on, on site, so that's, that's a different. They can't do nothing with the other lot. That's the other thing. I'm not sure where I'm going on this. I, I just wanted to express the point what happens. Um, I think they probably need to at some point combine that lot, make it one. Or do maybe I'd, I'd have a, I'd have a question for staff, you know, because we have 
people, we have rentals out in the hills that are B&Bs. Why couldn't these people do the B&B? Isn't that, that what it is? License. That's what it license is. License is the B&B. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Boy. That's what they're doing is the B&B. Yes, sir. So, Cody. <laughs> Sorry, Chair. Cody, can you do a non-access easement on point zero seven? Is there a utility easement or anything you can put on that property for the point zero seven since it's their property for the septic? No. For well, utility? Basically so a septic. For, for septic? If they can he can put a septic on, on that other property and still access the yeah, same but property, but in order to get to the over a lot, it would have to be the plotting process. You have to do it no matter what, even if it's a utility easement, because his septic is a utility, right? Correct. That, that 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 utility easement doesn't grant the land to that property. It just grants the usage to this land over here. It doesn't grant any size but change it, or anything like that. But it'd make it so his property was part of that and it would be something that would <laughs> the, the only way to I'm the trying. only way to change size is, is the potting process. And an access an access easement doesn't grant land, it grants the use. It doesn't it doesn't grant any land. Mr. But, Chairman, maybe on that level though, can they not do a deeded? Um, easement, because there are deeded easements. Are there not that you can deed an easement of that particular area, and then it becomes part of their current land? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Because point zero, I'm trying. <laughs> I see where you're going. Yeah, I think the only way to really, because you'd have to change the legal description. The legal description would have to contain an acre, and I think you would have to. You'd still have to go through the platting process and everything, even if you just did a quick fix, deed deed the easement, and then let them work through the process to do the plat. I believe um, that there was another variance where you granted them some time that they could still operate until they got through the process. Are you okay with that? For the, for the questions of the Wheatons, I have another speaker request Sorry, on Jim. this. Disrupting your meeting, sorry. Any further questions? We, of, uh, have to, we need to do that. One. Thank you. Yep, most of uh, the next speaker out. request I have is from Chris Anderson. Chris, would you like to come forward? I'm a little bit confused. Okay, tell us your name. And Chris Anderson. I live next door on the west side. Um, to Brandy Wheaton's property. Okay. So you live next to the vacant lot or where the... No, I... Oh, on the west side. On I'm the sorry. west side, yeah. On the other side, yeah. okay. okay. Um, I'm wondering if you also, besides receiving my letter and photos, did you also receive an email from Sherman Lewis? He didn't send it until Friday, and he sent me a copy of it. Um, he lives two doors west of me. Um, part of that issue is I was the only neighbor, apparently, who was notified within the 500-foot distance from Wheaton's property. Um, Lewis's are within that 500 feet and they didn't, they were not notified and I'm kind of thinking the neighbor in between probably also did not receive notification. Um, their home is a second home. They live down in winter. They farm down there. Um, I don't know that they even know that this is going on. I do have a copy of Mr. Lewis's response to this if you would all like to have a copy of this, if that's appropriate. I don't. I don't think that we received anything from. That name's not familiar. Is to it, me. is it appropriate for you to add that to the package right now? I don't believe that it is. It's not. He would have to add it himself. Uh, he would. We we received it early this morning, and there oh, is okay. a copy on the dais for you. Oh, is there? That was okay. placed this morning before the meeting started. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do have it. Thank you. Um. And then I've also been speaking with Jim DeHigh, who is the one who brought the deck issue to your attention. Um, so I'm not the only one in the neighborhood who is aware of what has been going on with this property and has had some serious concerns. Um, 
Jim DeHigh is also a volunteer with the Keystone Fire Department, and I have assumed that he's been monitoring the, the bonfires, the burning of construction debris and, and stuff that's been going on out of burning season. There is a photograph in my packet that it is a, um, a current pile um, that's really big. I um, don't know if Randy has burned it yet or not, but it's indicative of the piles that he has been burning outside of burning season with no snow on the ground. So I'm not the only one that has concerns about this. Um, sorry, I've been in isolation in COVID and I'm having a, a difficulty following the rapid fire commentary that's been going on here. I think some of my issues have been raised um, and, and I'm not quite sure how to proceed at this point, whether I should read through my letter and my concerns. I, it's, it's not real clear to me just where we are at this point. Um, one of my questions is, is the, the dwelling actually 25 feet in, in a proper setback or is it non-conforming? It looks to me like it's... I don't, I don't know that. Cody. Cody, can you answer that? It is, uh, sorry, Cody Sack, environmental planner. It's legal non-conforming. The house was built in 1961 before zoning requirements were in place, so that 25-foot setback was not required in 1961. Okay. So that does not enter into this? No. Although the lot site just does? Right. Okay. Well, it's... The lot size was determined later on for uh, vacation home rentals. Well, Chairman. Um, Commissioner Hatcock. Cody, was it... The dwelling was built without a permit, or it was did have a permit. I I didn't find a permit, but in 1961, not, not building one. permits weren't required. The vacation home. The the vacation home requires a conditional use permit. In order to get the conditional use permit, they have to get the variance. So the the how all the property the whole property was built in 1961 in yes so there isn't any new accessories or new garages not okay. that not that i'm aware of um it's just a part of the house upstairs yeah okay so miss anderson i guess i didn't i didn't get where you were going on the meaning they were grandfathered in non-conforming means they are grandfathered in because it was built in 1961 ma'am Do you have questions of us, ma'am? Um, I would like to have something clarified about the new septic system. Um, when when mine was redone in 2004, we were required to have that field placed 100 feet back from the creek. And eyeballing it, I have not taped Randy's, but it does not look like it's set back 100 feet from the creek. And I think that's a serious consideration for... Cody, can you respond to that? Yep. So they uh, they applied for a new uh, septic in, I believe, March or April. Uh, they did get a variance from the state for that 100-foot setback to go to 75 feet. So that it is closer than the 100 feet, but they got the proper variances from the state that's required to do that. And they did the the whatever was required of them because of that 75 feet and you yep. guys check legally yep. they're they're good yep aaron went out and inspected it it was approved so they did get a permit they did do it right everything is okay. correct yes okay, okay thank you mr. anything chair. further ms anderson mr chair commissioner uh, relative to the letter that we got this morning from sherman lewis yes he says i have to guess there are no other similar variances in that in this area as the properties are all bigger than one acre thus i also Guess granting a variance would set a precedence for more VHRs on substandard lots. So therefore, I can't support the variance because it's less than an acre. And we made that, we've always followed by that rule, to my knowledge. So it's awful close, but it still serves as a good guideline for me. So, Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. I would ask that um, these people end up getting to go through the variance process, but we have done this before. 
that we let them move through that variance process to change Plot, that plotting license. process. You mean? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. And let them operate their business while going through that process. Brittany. You're suggesting a period of time. Um, if you could, Brittany, help me out a little bit how we did the last one in order them to run their business and still um, move forward. Uh, Thank I believe you, that Anderson. was one in Idlewise, and I believe Thank that you, you gave them a year okay. to go through the planning process and to obtain their CUP from the planning commission. Okay. And then they had to come back in front of this board. Um, if you'd come up, sir, Randall, are you willing to go? Yeah, okay. I just need to get it re resurveyed and replotted, right? Um, the planning will help you, or the planning yeah. department will help you. Oh, okay. But in order to grant that, at least I'm one of five, that that would be something that you need to do. Okay. Um, number do two, Miss Miss Anderson, um, he also, if he did this as a rental home, he could have a lady with 10 kids in there. So um, a lot of times I'm finding that vacation home rentals work a lot better for neighbors, at least I know in my case, um, because... They're not using it all year round, and it's just a better use of the property. So, Colin, you're going to have to help us with that motion a little bit for this. Or me, anyway. Colin McNeese, Commissioner Hadcock, what exactly do you want to do? Do you want to deny? Approve. You want to approve? She's asking for uh, uh, allowing it to take place, uh, but that the planning process move forward. And so she's looking for a period of time that they continue to operate, but the planning process takes place in order to get that lot to over an acre. So Thank we're, you. So we're denying the, denying the variance yep. to move forward, to give them an, what do you call it, exception, to give them a year to go through the planning process of the new lot. Make sense? So they can conform to the vacation home rental rules. We're giving them a year to get that done because it takes so long to get through the um, plotting process. Oh, I see what you're going at. Let me try this. <laughs> <laughs> Motion would be to deny the variance, but give the applicant up to a year to com come into compliance with the one acre Minimum. Uh, require vacation rental uh, requirements. That it, that okay? And, but and he can continue to operate that way right now. You see, I, I, I see I, where you're going, Deb. I think I understand what Commissioner Lacroix is talking about, and the only addendum that I would add to his motion uh, would be to deny it based on staff's findings. Okay. Second. Got a motion and a second. Motion by Commissioner LaCroix, second by Commissioner Hadcock. Uh, Wheatley's have any questions relative to what the oh, motion just, is? We need to go back to the Penning County and get the paperwork for the... Yes, sir. For getting it you have one year okay. in which to bring it into, into compliance, uh, but you can operate during that period of time. If but you're not in compliance in a year, <laughs> uh, then, you, then you can't continue after that period of time. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Further questions? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Consent calendar. Move to come out of Board of Adjustment. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Adcock, second by Commissioner Lassiter. Come out of the Board of Adjustment. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. The Board of Adjustment, or excuse me, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine planning and zoning items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Board member or a citizen. The consent agenda for planning and zoning contains the following two items. Item D is minor plat MPL 21-29 for Shane Swedland. Fisk Land Surveying is the agent and approval is recommended. Item E is minor plat MPL 21-27 for TDG Real Estate Mike Gennaro and approval is recommended. So moved. Do I have a motion? I've got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Commissioner LaCroix. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we're on regular agenda items. Item F, go. Item F is preliminary plat PPL 21-17. It's to subdivide and create lots 5R and 5B of law subdivision. The applicant and landowners, Keith and Lona Lau, the surveyors, DC Scott surveyors. This was uh, seen before the planning commission where the motion failed. And then at the May 18th, uh, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting. It was continued to discuss with the applicant on why he wanted to subdivide. Staff spoke with the applicant and it is to uh, allow for a lot for his son to take care of uh, Mr. Lau. He said his health is failing and he wants a spot for his son. Um, it was uh, conveyed to him that he could do a conditional use permit for a um, caretaker's residence. Uh, he didn't really respond to that, and I do not believe that he's in the audience for any questions. Okay. I move to approve with seven conditions. I, have, I do have a speaker request on this. Okay. Sorry. Would you like to do that first? Uh, Jerry. Um, okay. Just identify yourself. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, I live next to the lot of uh, What's of your last name, Jerry? Pardon? Your last name again? Arnsey. Arnsey. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I oppose this uh, you know, this program that he's, he wants to position his house in. It sits right in front of my, our, our property in, in our house. And uh, that, that's the only reason why is uh, I don't think it's right that it's, it should be done that way. And uh, that's really all I had on it. Any questions of Mr. Arnsey? So, Chairman. Commissioner Edgar. Cody, are they meeting the setbacks to put this uh, house where they need to? Pardon? I'm sorry, sir. Sorry. So I haven't, I haven't seen any survey of where the house will go. The house will be one acre. Uh, the, they're rezoning it to suburban residential, which will require eight foot setbacks on the sides and 25 on the front and rear. Uh, I haven't seen where he plans on putting the second residence on that lot. Okay. Do you know where they're putting the second residence, sir? Do I what? Do you know where they're putting the second residence? Yes, I do. Okay. And can you show us? Because oh. it's going to, it sits right in our view when we look in front of our, our windows and everything. And where do you, can you, where on here? can you figure out where he lives? Point to it up for them. Yeah. yeah he's going to put it right on the corner on the southeast or southwest corner. So like right on there. the lot. Right in there. Right there. And yeah. where do you live, sir? Right in there. And where he does live, he live? You live right here, correct? Yeah. And he's looking at putting it right there. Okay. That's pretty far away. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Martin. Sir. <coughs> um, where are we at on this? So staff staff was recommending approval with ten conditions. That'd be my motion. Oops, sorry, I take that back. Seven. That's a, the next report. Let me make sure that the conditions are correct. Seven conditions. Seven conditions. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a motion by Commissioner uh, Hadcock to approve with seven conditions and a second by Commissioner Lacroix. Uh, for the discussion. So I'm a little, I am a little concerned on the placement of this uh, on that property. Uh, so is, is Mr. Lau here? No, he's he's not. I um, when I spoke with him at the counter, I recommended that that he be here because um, they I said that the board had some questions. Uh, he said that he would consider it and and walked out. So I, I'm not sure where he's at with. With things and when was that? When was that discussion? That was la early last week. Okay, okay. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Lasseter, there's no building permit that's been applied for yet for that home, right? No, that's correct. Further discussion, uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Rosconnect. Could the home? So, if you plant the one acre, could the home be located somewhere else in the one acre that wouldn't have a impact on the neighbor? 
as long as the home met setbacks, it could be placed on anywhere on the property. It doesn't necessarily need to be in that corner. I assume he wants it in that corner for a specific reason, but as long as it meets setbacks. Compared to the other neighbors, he's far away. Just for food for that. Commissioner Atka. Sorry, Commissioner. Um, if you look at the surrounding neighbors in the area um, right behind him, um, they actually are a lot further away from that house than in any of the other houses that are in the surrounding area away from each other. So if we put it in that corner, it'd actually be the perfect corner. So what is that? Could you show us what the arrow, where they- Number 60. Where they're talking about putting the house? 09 or whatever. So uh, according to the gentleman who just spoke, it was right up in this corner. So right where the 09 section line is. Within there, yep. And the neighbor that just spoke, his residence? His residence is right here, and they were going to go over here. Right here. I don't know if I say that's right in front. That's what I'm saying. It depends on how close he keeps it to that lot line. I'm going to guess, based on that access, Chairman, that it's probably going to go close to there instead of making that access way in the back. And it seems like the probable place to put it if I was going to put a house. And if you look at the surrounding neighborhood, it will fit the surrounding neighborhood as well. This is the permanent structure. If if the um, if the land is platted and you can build a house, it would be a permanent structure. Uh, if he goes the caretaker's route, um, which would require CUP, the house has to be one of the, one of the houses would have to be removed when care is no longer needed. Whether it be the one that he applies for the caretaker's residence down in that corner or the existing one. One would have to be done, or the lot would have to be plotted at that time. Is that a uh, the current one? Is that a modular or a mobile home that's there, or is that? I believe it's a double wide with an attached garage, if I remember okay. correctly. Okay, I've got a motion and a second for the discussion. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Uh, two no's. You and uh, Ross Raskin. Connect and I was only two no's. Three to two vote. Approved. Thank you. Item G. Item G is layout plan LPL 21-25. It is subdivided to create lots one and two of our DS subdivision. The applicant and landowner is Lorraine and Doug Smith. The agent is Fist Line Surveying. Janelle's in the audience if there are any questions. Currently, as the property sits, there's a single family residence with a detached garage and a tool shed, all of which have a proper building permits. There is an on site wastewater treatment system. On May 18, 2021, the Board of Adjustment approved subdivision regulation variance SP 21 06 to waive percolation test and profile hole information. Access to the property is off Neck Yoke Road. There is no special flood hazard area on the property. For the proposed lots, lot one will be 17.04 acres and be vacant of any structure. Lot two will be three acres and will contain all of the structures listed above as well as the septic system. This was routed around for interdepartment review. The County Highway Department um, came back and said an approach permit is required for proposed lot one. This will be handled during the building permit process. This was uh, heard before the Planning Commission on May 24th, uh, and they have recommended approval, and staff recommends approval of layout plan LPL 21-26 with with 10 conditions. So moved. Second. A motion to approve and a second. Commissioner Hadgard and Commissioner Lasseter for the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Want to speak, Janelle? <laughs> Item H. Item H is layout plan LPL 21-26. It is to combine lots to create track 35 revised of Rushmore Rancher State Subdivision. The applicant is Dana Kirstead. Currently, as the property sits, both lots are vacant. There is no on-site wastewater treatment system. Access is off of Hermosa Court. And there is no special flood hazard area on the property. 
Well, the proposed lot will be tracked 35. It'll be 29.57 acres. It'll be vacant of any structure. There is a section line that traverses north-south through the proposed property. This was read around for interior department review. Uh, there were no comments or concerns received. Uh, improvement or dedication of the section line right away is required or an approved subdivision regulation variance be obtained to waive the requirement and percolation test and profile hole information will be required or an approved subdivision regulation variance be obtained. This was heard before the planning commission on May 24th, which they recommended approval with seven conditions. So staff is recommending approval of LPL 21-26 with seven conditions. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinek. Move to approve layout plan L. PL 2126 with seven conditions. Is there a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner LaCroix. Further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Layout plan. Jason. Good morning again, Commissioners. Jason Thenison, Assistant Planning Director. Agenda item I is layout plan 21-28 to combine three lots in order to create lot 8R of Burns Placer MS697. The applicant is Jeff Hermanson, his surveyor is Spurlick Consulting. Uh, location of the proposed lot is north of the intersection of Marshall Gulch and Deerfield Road. It is currently zoned rural, res rural residential district. Access is off Deerfield Road and there is special flood hazard area on the subject property. Um, so we're talking about three separate properties. Uh, the first property is uh, on the bottom of the screen, it is 0.51 acres that is vacant of any structures or utilities. The second property is in the center, and it does contain a single family residence as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. And the third is at the top of the screen. It is 0.19 acres, contains two outbuildings uh, that the applicant will need to work with staff to identify. It does seem like there is a setback issue there. Uh, proposed lot uh, will be basically just removing the two interior lot lines. It will be 1.26 acres, contains single family residence, shed and carport, as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. County Highway stated that an approach permit uh, needs to be acquired for the existing approach off of Deerfield Road. And the county floodplain manager noted that there is 100 year floodplain limits and they need to be identified on future plots. And with that, staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land uses in the area and recommends approval with conditions. Move for approval. We've got a motion from Commissioner LaCroix to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second, second from Commissioner Ross Connect. Right, can I ask Jason one question? Uh, yes. Jason, Ross. this property is located in real close proximity to the one that we just discussed earlier on Marshall Gulch. Uh, I don't believe it's in the same neighborhood. I do believe it's, if it is, it is off of Deerfield Road. I can bring up a map again here. Oh, that's all right. I just just trying to dial in where this is located. I think it's located to the stuff on Marshall Gulch where they wanted to do the two lots at 2.38 <laughs> acres. Mm -hmm. uh, I, can bring I up think it's the same drainage. It very well could be. That's all right. No further questions. Got a motion and a second for the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item J. Agenda item J is comprehensive plan amendment 21-10 to change future land use to rural residential district. Applicant is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company, LLC. The agent is Renner Associates, LLC. And staff recommends to continue this request to the July 6th 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting. So moved. Motion. Got a motion by Commissioner LaCroix. Second. Second by Commissioner Lasseter to continue until July 6th. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item K. Item K is rezone 21 15 to rezone to a rural residential district. Again, the landowner is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company LLC. Their agent is Renner Associates LLC. And again, staff recommends to continue this request to the July 6, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting. Move to continue. I got a motion by Commissioner Lasseter. Is there a second? Second. A second by Commissioner LaCroix uh, to continue until July 6. Also, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item. L. Item L is preliminary plat 21-24 to create lots one through six of Elkhorn Estates. 
The applicant is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company, LLC. Agent again is Renner Associates, LLC. Location of the subject properties is 12807 Old Hill City Road. Uh, total uh, acreage of the properties involved is 30.27 acres. Currently zoned ranchette and rural residential districts. Uh, starting on the far right, you can see there's three separate properties here that we're talking about. Uh, that one is vacant of any structures and utilities. Uh, the one in the center contains a single family residence as well as a detached garage and an operating permit. And the third on the far left contains a greenhouse as well as a 24 by 80 pole barn and an on-site wastewater treatment system and operating permit. The proposed lots, uh, you can see here on the screen, lot one is going to be 5.022 acres and vacant of any structures. Lot two will be 4.538 acres and also vacant of any structures or utilities. Lot three will be 3.757 acres, will contain the 24 by 80 pole barn as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. Lot four will be 5.439 acres, contain a single family residence as well as a detached garage greenhouse and on-site wastewater treatment system. Lot five will be 6.679 acres and vacant of any structures, utilities, and lot six will be 3.848 acres and also vacant of structures or utilities. Access to proposed lots one and two will be off Old Hill City Road via a portion of section line labeled on the plat as a 33 foot wide access easement. Access to proposed lots three and four will be via 66 foot wide access utility easement leading to a 40 foot wide access easement. And lastly, access to proposed lots five and six will be via 66 foot wide access and utility easement. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review highway services uh, to come back with a few comments stating that an approach permit will need to be obtained for the shared access for lot one and lot two on the section line. Also that an approved variance will be required in order to have two approaches off of proposed lot two. And that any roads built along or within section line shall be built to ordinance 14 standards. And lastly, that an approach permit for the existing approach must be filed with the county highway department. And those are included as conditions of approval or will be handled during the building permit process. Emergency services also have a comment stating that the applicant will need to provide 911 with an alternate street name as Elkhorn is already an approved street name in Rapid City. And an update to this uh, for the board is that they have worked with County 911 and approved the name, or they're holding the name Heavenly Court, which 911 approved. And that was not, in, so that condition of approval is satisfied at this point. Staff's analysis of the request is on May 18th, 2021. The Board of Commissioners approved subdivision regulations 21 11 to not dedicate and improve section lines. On that day, you also approved relocation of section line RS 21 01. And the app, <clears throat> excuse me, the applicant's agent submitted rezone 21 15 and comprehensive plan amendment 21 10, which was just heard as the previous agenda items. With that, the applicant's request appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land use in the area, and staff recommends approval of preliminary plat 21 24 <coughs> with conditions. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinect. I move to approve. Second. Got a motion to approve. Second. And a second by Commissioner Hadcock. Further discussion? All those in favor, and to keep it saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item M. Good morning, commissioners. Item M is public hearing of Ordinance Amendment OA 21-09, Pennington County, to amend Section 508 zoning or rezoning, to amend and supersede the existing Section 508 zoning or rezoning of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. The Planning Commission did recommend approval of this zoning ordinance amendment. Uh, the purpose of this ordinance amendment was a couple of things. Um, so the zoning procedure was... Uh, consistent with state statute and to simplify the notification requirements for the public. Uh, currently, uh, we require them to send out notices um, to abutting and 
landowners within 500 feet by certified return receipt mail. Uh, we are asking that it just be changed to certified mail. So if you look at page three under section B, it actually says registered mail. It should say certified mail. So I would recommend those changes under section B2 and section B3 um, to change those from registered to certified. I did uh, clarify uh, with the commission assistant that registered is actually more expensive than certified. Nice. Um, so we wanna go with the certified mail. It will save uh, the property owners about $4 um, for every mailing without having to have that return receipt. Um, and it will still be consistent with state statute, so we'll still meet the requirements uh, that are required under statute. Um, and we also did remove under the comprehensive plan amendment, there was a couple of changes that we made uh, that you don't have to notify the agricultural um, properties within two miles uh, by first class mail. And secondly, uh, the comprehensive plan amendments would only be required um, if the zoning district is not consistent or more restrictive than the current zoning. So if a property owner wanted to zone to agriculture and the future land use was rural residential, they wouldn't have to change the comprehensive plan amendment because rural residential is more restrictive. Um, so it would save some um, time with having to amend our comprehensive plan all of the time and Building lessen process. the requirements um, for the public and still be consistent with statute. So Brittany? Yes. So registered mail means that you get a response back that the person that that was addressed to has personally received it? So registered mail, um, I did get clarification from the commission assistant. Registered mail is actually hand delivered. Uh, certified mail is it just has a tracking number and it shows that it was delivered. A certified return receipt it has the little green cards that you have to sign for and then they're sent back to the sender. So in our current ordinance so, right now. So on, okay, so on the certified mail, we know that they have receipt of that mail. Correct. There is a tracking number for it. Okay. So those are the major changes under that ordinance, and there are just some clarifications um, for state statute on the appeals process that was incorrect in the old ordinance. Any questions of Brittany? <coughs> I have a motion. Got a motion, Commissioner LaCroix. Second. Second from Commissioner Lassiter. Any any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, opposed? Motion carried. Item 26, committee reports. Travis. Pull out my binder. I got a ton of them right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a pretty busy couple of weeks. Um, so let's just go down the line. The Pennington County Health Care Trust Board, um, that meeting was primarily, we discussed a lot of different things, but probably the biggest bulk of it was talking about our, the pharmaceutical aspect of our health insurance. And so there's going to be some more discussion based on what, you know, the recommendation for um, whether we have to consider raising premiums and things of that nature, but they're getting some final data so we can make a determination on that. Uh, let's see here, Pennington County Public Safety, the LLPC. We talked about a lot of stuff during that um, meeting. Uh, hazmat team reports probably is one area, 41 calls for service since February, uh, 25 of them were gas leaks. That's some, you know, some numbers just to kind of give us an idea. Um, schools are now opening again for hazmat training, so that's good so they can get in there and do some hazmat training for the, for the community. Uh, hazmat conferences are opening back up again, so they'll be able to do some of that training as well as uh, joint CST training at, at the School of Mines. Um, Western Dakota Tech um, opened up for a tabletop exercise, simulated propane truck hitting the building so they can kind of go through all that kind of stuff. Um, but things are starting to open up and they're able to start doing training courses and um, go back out into the community and, and touch base with the community and get some people um, trained or continuing their educational training. So that's a good thing for them. Elevate Rapid City, uh, we talked a lot about different things for local economic development. Uh, Steve Wester was there, that's where uh, 
he was talking about the businesses that are looking to come into the into our state from other areas and how they're looking to grow. Uh, and like I said, 66 of them are looking at West River um, locations. Oh, let's see here. September 16th is the grand opening to the Ascent Building. If you if you're familiar with it, it's right next. It's right across the street from the um, the post office. That's where um, South Dakota um, Elevate Rapid City is going to be. Um, Sadia is going to be in there, and that's kind of their um, new. Um, trying to remember the term that they use for that building, the incubator. So small business startups, and then move on. Incubation center. Incubation center. There you go. Um, the projects that are looking to come into the, the into our area is about one point two five billion dollars in capital expenditures over the next several years. So that's a lot of growth potential growth in our West River area. So just to keep that in mind. And outside of that, um, that's about the bulk of it from Elevate. The Community Health Center of the Black Hills, Lloyd and I were there, so if he wants to add into it, um, sure, by all means. But one of the big things they talked about was the, uh, um, the opening of the, uh, the pharmacy there out of the care campus so that it's a, a, a remote pharmacy. They can, uh, if somebody needs a, a refill or or whatnot, there's, there's a, it's a new pharmacy system that they can just pick up the line and say, hey, I need to refill this medication. They hang up the phone, there's lockers there. They come back in a couple of days and their refill will be in the locker and they'll have an access code to get in there to get their medication so they don't have to go to the community health center for their pharmacy refill. It just kind of saves time if they happen to be over here in the, in the particular area rather than having to make it over there. So that's kind of one of their big plans um, for that. Uh, we talked a little bit about the budget and the needs from the county. It doesn't look like they're going to request any more funds than what they currently um, are requesting from us normally right now. So that was good. Um, they have a new doctor, Alan, who's uh, who, who came on board, and he's working well with their nurse practitioner and their PAs. Uh, they have a new nurse practitioner uh, position um, still to fill, and there they have a, um, a, I think it's a, a student that's um, shadowing over there that um, they're interested in bringing on board once they complete their schooling. Um, outside of that, Lloyd, anything you want to add to that? That was pretty much the bulk of the conversation. Commissioner LaCroix. The only thing I'd add to, the, to that is, uh, and thanks, you did some great notes. I knew when I left here. But uh, one of the things that we discussed at the community health was a rebranding. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it makes absolute set, sense for, for community health because people uh, have in their head, since it's community health, that maybe it's just for low income people and adjusted to that and they so the stigma thinks that you may not get the care that you would at a normal place which is totally false i mean i'm i've registered went there and it, it it's the same thing so they're they're talking about doing a rebrand of community health to try and get other people in the community that have regular insurance normal people to do it which would be perfect with the satellite from crossing the county because with the employees that we have here to go field meds there, do that type of stuff would, would work good. Uh, otherwise, Travis did a good job on that. But on that same note, you know, I've, I've made a point uh, of doing, being a, a patient at community health and I am also currently IHS or Yate, and I recently, Took, a, uh, took the preferred position at Oyate this year, and I'm just amazed at the, the service at Oyate Health or IHS, how much has changed around. When you make an appointment, you're in and out within an hour. The recommendations were as long times, it was long, long terms. So Geraldine's doing an awesome job of, of uh, customer service, I would say, or patient service for those. And so, so is community health. Uh, with that, I'll just yield. Okay. Uh, all I have is a planning commission, and we just received all those in our regular business. So, Commissioner Roskinect. 
Uh, Pennington County Housing and Redevelopment. We approved five awards at that meeting, totaling 879,800. Those awards would be for kitchen upgrades, window replacement, roofing for five different uh, facilities. Another interesting number is the number of vouchers that we have. We have 1,417 vouchers. Right now, we're only using 1,325. So we got some like 92 vouchers out there that somebody could be using. But they use them, we have to have a place to put them. So th there's a solid evidence that we don't have enough units uh, available to the, to the uh, demand. Uh, other than that, it was just uh, pretty much business as normal. And then the building committee, we did a Zoom with uh, the venture architects and they outlined, you know, the jail infrastructure project. And I think most interesting was the projected cost budget for just shy of $29 million. Uh, some of that might be trimmed off a little bit, but uh, still going to be pr probably going to be, when it's all said and done, $30 million in a two-year time frame. Help me out with that. $30 million to, to replace sewer. There's no improvements to the building besides just they're, sewer. And they're, they're talking about doing some improvements, uh, very nominal. But so what Kevin asked is that they could sit there and go over it one more time more thoroughly to see what we could what we could uh, not do uh, i don't know that that's gonna i think when you when you get in there that deep this would be the time to do it uh i mean you're you're talking electronics uh just uh i they're gonna be in there pretty deep yeah you know? i I think that's something we probably need to explain a little bit more because when you just say from pipes, and people say, why can't you just line them and all that type of stuff? But you, yeah, I guess you're absolutely right. If you're replacing plumbing, you got to tear through walls and flooring. So if you're going to do something, you better do it. Well, they're doing electronics. At that point in time. Remember, the systems have to be redone and okay. things have to be reconstructed, not just pipes underneath once you do that, Lloyd. It would not be cheaper to to do something different with that building and build a new building. This is probably economically gonna be the cheapest, our cheapest route. Uh, Typically, my experience shows that jails have a lifespan of about 40 years. And by doing this, even though this may sound very expensive, this is replacing a lot of those things that are no longer used, cast iron, for example. Yep that are no longer used. And so uh, with this, uh, doing the infrastructure that's needed there, you're probably gonna extend the life of that facility another 40 years. So even though that's a lot of sticker shock of 29 to 30 million to do the infrastructure, it's probably by far more efficient and economical to do that than to look at building anything new, so. And there are enough, that numerous other projects that are on the drawing board and what we're going to try to do is identify those projects what they're going to cost and prioritize them so that uh, we actually know how much money we're going to need in the future because uh, we, we've got the list but we're just really we're not putting numbers to them and we're not saying what needs to be done first um, i think that would help the building committee uh, immensely going forward well and the infrastructure is about 18 and then they have others like I said, the electronics and stuff. So we knew it was going to cost between 10 and 20. And we figured if it was 10, and you already know, based on Long construction costs. And, yep, you just doubled it anyway. And then once you get in there, you already know. Then you start seeing some more stuff that you missed. Um, so building committee, we covered a public advisory. Um, I missed that one. Um, I actually went to a different meeting. <laughs> So, sorry, on some bylaws, bylaw stuff, but um, Pennington County Housing Rede Redevelopment, I met with David Lust, and they would like to do a 2% um, um, workforce housing loans through their trust, um, some things like that, but 
Um, in our case, I think um, we have the land for Pennington County Housing Authority. Uh, we have land on the north side. We have land in the middle of town. We have land on Fox Run area on the south side. Um, we need some funding source. If we're going to do workforce housing, if you look at his entity where he's putting those numbers of how much people make to how much people make, we are actually in those numbers in, in the housing authority. So if we're going to put our money instead of giving it to somebody else, we already have two commissioners plus an authority that already has land and resources um, already developed. So it seems if we're going to put get your most bang for the buck, you'd probably put those extra resources instead of giving it to somebody else, uh, you'd give it to the people, um, well, Pennington County. Um, it's all in Rapid City, it's in Wall, it's in Hill City, so it's not just Rapid City. So that economic development would be huge for the surrounding area, not just Pennington County, not that they can't, or Rapid City, not that they can't do that, but at this point, like I said, if you have an entity, and I think Ron can vouch for it, um, with that much um, experience and authority in the sense that could get it done. I say we could get it done and get it done a lot quicker and we're not looking for land and that's where a lot of people are, are getting that hold up. So we might be coming to uh, the county to see if we can get money for moving forward on our housing authority as well. So. Thank you, commissioners. Mr. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. <laughs> I, I did forget, but I have a favor to ask of the building committee also. Uh, <clears throat> the, pay, the public defenders meeting, we did attend, but we did not end up not having a quorum, but we went over the budget for uh, public <clears throat> defenders, and we we're talking about the expansion. I think I mentioned this before, with the numbers that they, they're seeing and the number of employees, they're, they're going to need more. One of the things I told Eric and the th group that was there is I toured their offices to see what their space had looked like. And there's a possibility, there's a mechanical room, that, a great big mechanical room up there. There could be some space in there. Um, I have to get with Mike Cole and, and open those doors and see what kind of room, what kind of plans there are, expansions for those. But um, if you guys, they canceled the, the meeting today for, yeah. did they? Maybe, uh, could you ask about that uh, at your next building committee meeting? I'll try and set up something so I can go look at it. But well, uh, Commissioner LaCroix, when I looked at it, I thought I didn't see no extra FTEs. They just had 34. Um, you know, you'll have to look at some more. Okay, have, okay. He, he'll come up with it. It's Okay, I just didn't see any. Just FTEs. the overall from where it's at. He, the projections are there, but but yeah, take a look at that. I did bring down the paperwork for you, Dad, okay. so you know. But any more on committee reports? Hearing none. Uh, I need a motion for executive session. So moved. Second. Yeah, I got a motion and a second by Lasseter and Lacroix, uh, going into executive session for personnel issues. One twenty-five dash two dash one. <laughs> Move to come out of executive session. Second. We got a motion and a second to come out of executive session. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We moved John to, was still gathering we, papers. We moved to fast. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow we're back here at 12? <laughs> no. 8. 8.30. 8.30. Eight thirty. Yes. We need lunch. 30 tomorrow. <laughs> What's up? Uh, We're back in session. Good Sorry. afternoon, Commissioners. John Morrow, Pennington County Human Resources. So I've got a few motions I'd like to make here today for your consideration. The first is this. I move to place Roxanne Hammond, Senior Deputy State's Attorney, at grade C44, step 8, for an effective hourly rate of 40 61 an hour, effective May 30th, 2021. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner LaCroix. Is there a second? Second. By Commissioner Hadcock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 
Okay, the next motion uh, I'd like you to consider is to move Kenneth Even, uh, seasonal enforcement technician for the Natural Resources Department, to a grade A12, step eight, at 1464 an hour, effective May 24th, 2021. Is there a motion? A move. Second. Commissioner LaCroix and Commissioner Adcock, uh, just a reminder, this is a part-time position. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, then I've got a few for the treasurer's office. The first is to move Cora Freed uh, to uh, the scale as a tax and title lead at B23 step six for $22.99 an hour, effective May 30th. So moved. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Laster, second by Commissioner LaCroix. 2021. I forgot Pardon the year. Me? So May 30th, 2021. Sorry, I had to okay. add the year. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion indicate we're saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the next is a motion to move Tina Sun to tax and title lead at grade B23, step six for $22.99 an hour, effective May 30th, 2021. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner LaCroix, second by Commissioner Hadcock. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, next is to uh, move to uh, move Brooke Walker to uh, tax and title lead at grade B23, step six, $22.90 an hour, $22.99 an hour, excuse me, effective June 27th, 2021. So move. Got a motion okay. by Commissioner LaCroix, second by Commissioner Laster. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, the next is a motion to move Melissa Clem to a tax and title lead uh, on at, on a scale at grade B23, step six, at a rate of $22.99 an hour, effective July 25th, 2021. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner LaCroix. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Laster. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and the last one I have is for Buildings and Grounds Department. It's to move to allow Buildings and Grounds employees to each donate up to 20 hours of their accrued vacation time for a fellow Buildings and Grounds employee to use. The maximum total donated hours to the employee would be 200 hours. So moved. Second. I've got a motion by Commissioner Hancock, second by Commissioner Lasseter. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Commissioners. By the way, I think that was pretty awesome again, um, this commission, to letting them move forward with helping out one of their fellow teammates. So, Agree. from buildings and grounds. So, thank, thanks from all this commission. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move. Thank you. Got a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, for food. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Are you guys